I, I think we just take it from the top. Okay, all right, go for it, Kaibu. Pretend <laughs> none of that happened. Okay. Now? Yes, now. Ah, hello, everybody, and welcome <laughs> to Embers of the Wild, a D and D campaign, but using fifth edition with our brand new cast of characters and players who are all going to be fantastic for us here. I am Koibu. I'll be your DM for the evening and for the remaining Saturdays coming forward. So why don't we go around the table and get to know our player characters, starting with whoever is to my left. Uh, that uh, would be me. Here. That's you. You know what? Isn't it better if we start with a person in town that's most central and like <laughs> kind of establishes the setting? Let's or... start with the sheriff of the town. Yeah. Who, according oh, to right. my economics document regarding the income of every single person in town is one of the most wealthy people in town by the way we hadn't talked about this before but like you're the third highest income earner in town i'll take Um, it (laughs) i'm also pretty rich so there we go Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah i am kyra i am the sheriff of trog canyon um i uh, I am the law, basically. Uh, I run the executive division of, of this tiny little town. Um, I don't make the laws. I just enforce them. And mm-hmm. well-known throughout the town. Everyone knows my name. Pretty friendly. Try to do as much good as I can. Uh, keep order in this little Trog Canyon. Excellent. And would you tell us just a little bit about your character? Uh, what's your, your, your species? Your class, yeah. maybe age, I'm something about you that we can uh, connect with. Human fighter. Uh, so I'm 26 years old. Um, have some scale mail, a sword, and a shield. Uh, mm. Very much the protector sort of, uh, sort of class. Excellent. And next in line is going to be Tristel. Uh, who are you, and who are you playing today? Hello. So I'm Tristel. I'm a half elf uh, bard, and. I've seen many things, I've been many places, none of it none of it really spoke to me, and so I'm always looking for something new. Um, however, uh, something about Trog Canyon has kept me lingering a little longer than I typically do, so uh, you can find me at the local um, hotel where I've taken up residence, um, maybe singing a song or two, and generally staying out of mischief, as the sheriff knows. Staying out of mischief? Are we mm-hmm. certain about this? <laughs> Entirely out of it. No mischief to be found here. Great to hear. Wonderful. I just haven't noticed it. <laughs> and last but not least, we have Pearl. Who are you and who are you playing today? Uh, I will be playing Pearl Riverdale. Um, I am a Tabaxi sorceress. Um, specifically, I'm going to be playing a uh, wild magic sorceress. Um, mm. So... Pearl is a bit of an outcast in this town, and she quite literally appeared out of nowhere one day. Uh, about 16 years ago, there was a hunter in the forest uh, named Lydia Riverdale, who all of a sudden found this, heard this like thundering sound and found a smoldering crater that was just radiating magic, uh, where a little cat-like creature was on the ground, um, seemingly unconscious at the time. Uh, Lydia. Uh, picked up this little cat and decided to adopt adopt her as her, her own little cat, cat. And then she grew up to be a very large humanoid cat. Um, and Lydia has never really seen a creature like this before, but decided to take Pearl in and raise her as her own child. Um, and the, this little cat is also kind of unstable. Uh, it seems like there's been some sort of almost like a poisoning of raw magic that happened as this cat appeared in the middle of the forest. So Pearl is able to, uh, to some extent, harness magic, but it seems like it doesn't quite always go the way that she wants to, and it's very difficult to control this. Um, so growing up, she's been like practicing and trying to learn how to harness this, uh, this very weird energy. Um, but otherwise, she's been sort of making friends with the local hunters in Trog Canyon uh, because her skills are kind of useful to, um, yeah, for hunting in, in general. Uh, so that's sort of been her way to contribute to the society, even though she's kind of a weird outcast. Uh, but people, people sort of are kind of okay with her being there for the most part. Excellent. So, 
uh, you guys all kind of know each other, right? Especially Pearl and uh, the sheriff in town, Kyra. Kira? Kyra. 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 Uh, you guys have known each other for a while, but Tristel is sort of new here. So, Tristel, why don't you tell me about your uh, your relationship with Pearl and Kyra, since you're the newcomer? What do you think about these the town sheriff and the strange tabaxi sorceress. The strange tabaxi sorceress, I, I actually quite like her. So Pearl, I, I find her pretty agreeable. She stays out of my business, I stay out of hers. Kira, on the other hand, I think could stand to maybe keep her nose out of certain places, but I understand it's uh, due to her job. Right. Um, once or twice, maybe we've had a run-in. Uh... I won't say much on it, just that, um, yeah, I, I, I definitely feel a, a, a bit of tension between us, but I, I don't know. I think it's really on her. Mm, I see. <laughs> and as I understand it, uh, Kyra and Pearl know each other and are quite friendly. Right? I think we would be quite friendly, yes. yeah. I think the the spiciest part of our relationship is probably going to be whenever some accident happens and in terms of like what i'm allowed to do in town because i imagine like i probably wouldn't be allowed to cast spells in like populated area after you know accidents happen in the past so mm -hmm. yeah uh, my attitude towards pearl is that she is a resident of this town and deserves protection equal to any other resident of this town so i care about her but she also causes some uh, issues with other citizens, so put her over at the western side of the canyon to make sure she's not a harm mm. to anyone else. Mm. Would you say that uh, you're more than friendly with her, like you guys like to hang out and associate, or is she just like another civilian? Just another civilian, yeah. Well, maybe we do hang out a little bit more, just because her dangerous magics causes us to have more run-ins but but i imagine that wouldn't that. be like positive hangouts and just having a drink you know yeah <laughs> makes sense perfect um so we're actually going to start our campaign with pearl and tristel hanging out one evening um after the sun has gone down over in pearl's end of the canyon uh, it's just the two of you why are you guys what, what's the cause for celebration tonight or association um that's a good question. Yeah. Why, why are per Pearl and Tristel okay. hanging out today? I mean, I would want to know a lot about the world. I think uh, a big driver for me and motivating thing for like exploring the world is to find out like why the heck I'm here. Because, um, you know, I kind of appeared out of nowhere and I seem to like, there is no other Tabaxi around. I don't even know the word Tabaxi. Uh, so like, I'm, I'm kind of like... I don't know where I came from and I want to find that out. So I think Tristel being like the only person from the outside might know more about that. Uh, although it's been a year, so I presume we've talked about this a few times before. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Otherwise, I mean, Tristel seems to be someone who like hangs out with a lot of people for any reason, so. Fair enough, maybe I'm a, a glass or two of wine in. <laughs> yeah. So why don't we come and we'll just hop in with the two of you guys hanging out. What is the conversation around Pearl's living room, social room, common room? And uh, what does the common room look like as well? And, you know, any order that you guys want to tackle. Um, I would imagine that Pearl lives in... So most people live, like, in the, like, caves or the old mines or whatever, right? Yeah, almost every... And actually, I think every single building is burrowed into the cliff sides of Trog Canyon. Mm -hmm. um, so your house is stone, surrounded by stone, and you've got a front door and maybe a couple of windows, if you're lucky. Uh, but otherwise, it's all dark and cool indoors. Yeah, I think um, I think Pearl's... Um, I want to say apartments. I feel like I, I don't know what words to use. Cave. Um, I, I, I think Pearl's cave is very much almost like spherical 
like a lot of it is vertical because you know Pearl can just jump around and hang out on whatever perch she wants to, right? Um, mm -hmm. And she doesn't have a lot of visitors, so there's almost no like social space set up at all, uh, except for maybe like a table to eat at. Otherwise, uh, there's no dedicated bed. Uh, there are just like pelts everywhere because she's hunting, and it's cozy to have a you know a very soft, fluffy home where you can just lie down on whatever little cliff perch it happens to be in this uh, spherical area. I think that's the that's the energy of Pearl's space. I love it. <laughs> Cozy. Excellent. So what are you guys chatting about here in Pearl's house late one night? What are we chatting about? Yeah, there's gotta be, you know, the converse you guys hang out, there's a glass of wine or two. Pearl's probably asking about the bigger world out there. What sort of questions would you have for uh Tristel about about the big world beyond the walls of Trog Canyon. So, so Tristel, you've told me that you have a fascination for the water and the oceans. Why do you, why do you feel so drawn to that? I do. Oh, there's something about it. It's, it's the feeling of there's something more out there. So what you're describing where you want to know what the world is. Well, when you're staring at the ocean, it's, it's endless. There could be something on the other side, but it, it just sort of draws you in. You want to know more. It's really something. Did you used to sail a lot on the oceans? Oh, no. I try to keep away from sailors, if you understand. Uh, I don't think I've ever met a sailor. What's... How, what are they like? What are sailors like? Uh, <laughs> that's probably for the best. I definitely think you should stay away from them, my sweet. Mm. Um... Sailors, a, a, a rowdy bunch for sure, but, um, well, let's talk about something else now. <laughs> like rowdy, rowdy sort of like Kyra or like? Definitely trouble. You should hmm. stay away. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are yes. having a night. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, it's just, <laughs> just, yes. Definitely something to stay away from, but the ocean really is something. You should see it one day. I think I saw the ocean at one point, but I never really went there. It seems kind of open and scary, and I don't know. I usually don't like water, so it doesn't seem to be my thing. Oh, I'm so sorry. That that no, would no, be the case, I, wouldn't it's it? It's okay. I, it, I, like, I like small bodies of water. That seems fun to me, and, you know, you gotta drink. But large bodies of water <laughs> just seems very scary to me. Like, what happens if you fall in? Do you just... do you just die? Um, yes, that does happen after some time. <laughs> you, you, you can swim, sure, but, um, if, if you fall in, yes, you will, you need air, you see. Hmm, that seems horrible. I don't know if I'd want to visit that. So the two of you are chatting, having a nice time, you know, learning about the world, making <laughs> friends, uh, and Kyra. It's your day on shift, uh, on night watch this evening. You know, you walk around the town, keep an eye out, make sure no one's starting any fires. There's not like a random goat that's coming through town and eating everyone's plants or some mischief happening. Um, as you are taking the river path and headed up Canyon, just to keep an eye on everything, you spot at the very edge of your vision a pair of monstrous looking creatures crawling up the front deck of Pearl's house. Um, now it's nighttime. There is moonlight to see by, but your vision's really only gonna extend about to these creatures if you can see the arrows and everything. Um, if there's anything really beyond this range, it's just not gonna be on the map. So just think of the map as sort of like the blueprint of your, in your mind of the area but there could be, you know, people or creatures or whatever anywhere. Um, so it's late. It's night. You see these things crawling up on her deck. And before you declare any actions, what is your what is your initial internal reaction to seeing these two like oddly shaped, soft skin, sort of like oily skinned creatures with tails? Humanoid in nature, maybe five or six feet tall, um, slinking around. What is? What do you think about these things? 
Right, so I'm on watch, so I'm obviously alert and not surprised too much to see something scary. Uh, my first thought is, is anyone immediately in danger? So do I need to rush and go there immediately, or do I have time to run back to my sheriff, uh, wake up an assistant? And it seems like I don't have time. Uh, so I am going to have to do this alone, I think. Um, and investigate on my own. Mm, and so, okay. um, because I haven't seen like anything in this canyon, nothing ever interesting happens in this canyon. Uh, so this is immediately sets off a lot of or, or, uh, alarm bells. So I start mm. running towards, uh, towards Pearl's house to see what's going on. So just like flat out dead yeah. run across the open space towards the creatures. No this attempt to like very unusual your position. Just run into the middle of it. Yeah, Love it. Uh, I'm confident. Yeah, Great. Uh, always... And you've got 25 speed, right? Because you're a human. Um, I can't have 30. both my... Must be 30. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 30 speed. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right, so you can do a, a move and a dash and get out here into this section, and I will now give our creatures a chance to see the warrior charging at them. Yep. Let's see what their perception check is. I presume we can't hear anything inside? No, no, no. You guys are inside. There's these thick walls. There's fire going. You've had a couple of glasses of wine. Cristal is like loudly talking about like biceps uh, minutes here or something. Or... <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> biceps of minutes. See, that's yeah. the specific, <laughs> like very specific <laughs> detail descriptions. Uh -huh. <laughs> um,. Right. So the creatures don't see you after your first jog across the stream and up the canyon a little bit. They're still pretty interested in what's going on over here. One of them is at the base of the ladder. The other one has got climbed up already and has moved across to the front door. And it's like slinking about, you know, taking its time to be kind of quiet, not to really, you know, show anything, uh, reveal its position. You would never have noticed them if you weren't actively already down in this area. They seem pretty pretty quiet what kind of doors do we have to all of these buildings wooden doors okay with hinges mm -hmm. i suppose that you could have locks there's not much of a call for locks in this region since there's not really any crime or theft going on and locks are pretty complicated i think your locks are probably in the form of like um like a bar you place across the front of the door rather than like a really intricate um doorknob style lock that's that takes some pretty advanced technology um so kyra that's your turn again the monsters right. have not seen you they're just kind of slinking around so now that i'm closer can i get a better look of if these things seem dangerous or if they're just like random wild creatures or do i think that these things could do real harm yeah, they look pretty dangerous. Um, they've got these long tails, this kind of thick, oily, leathery hide, a, a ridge of spikes that start on their head and then run down their back and down their tail. They've got these almost canine-looking feet, but with, like, large three-clawed toes um, on the front of them. They're not wearing any armor. They're not carrying any weapons, but they're definitely humanoid and intelligent. Okay. Um... Let's see. I feel responsible for this town, so I don't think I would let uh, a creature sneak up on a citizen uh, just to give me an advantage on attacking them. And so I will shout as loud as I can. Um, there looks like there's people across the canyon from me, and I will try to shout loud enough to make the people across the canyon um, wake up or like look out their doors see what's going on and i will try to tell them to go get help these people um on the south side of the canyon yeah. mm -hmm. and All right. hopefully uh pearl and tristel hear me um hopefully hopefully well uh these creatures before you are definitely going to hear you yes. and see you mm -hmm. and it will change their entire position instead of sneaking towards the house they both whip around to face you, one of them hurrying to the corner of the deck to get a, a better idea. Um, uh, 
the canyon folks. Well, you know, it might take them a while to get to their door. There's nice thick walls. Everyone's asleep. No one has responded yet, but with rounds being so short, it might take them a few minutes to get here anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the creatures see you. And they take yes. a moment to look you up and down. They see your armor, your weapons, standing openly in the middle of the field like this. Uh, I continue running towards them as I'm yelling. Because right. uh, I have no ranged weapons, and I don't want to get caught out uh, with a ranged weapon. Well, if you are going to continue to run towards them, they are going to come and meet you in combat. Heck so yeah, why don't we start off our first battle with an initiative roll from Kyra. Okay. Um, character sheets, initiative. Oh, shoot. I should have selected the token. Um, Are you just going to fight these alone? <laughs> oh, no. I'm well, I'm about hoping this. that you hear my yelling. I keep on <laughs> making noise uh, as I fight. Oh, okay. Yeah. This and you rolled initiative with a 6.15. Not super great. No, Some might uh, even call it bad. Um, <laughs> but those would be naysayers. Soon. Right. Uh, rap battle it is. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, the first of the troglodytes will go. It will scurry down the ladder a little bit and use its movement to get about here, I think, including the ladder climbing. The second troglodyte will move up as well and not quite close with you, but stand next to its friend. Nice right. and ready, gauging the situation. Um, your turn, Kyra. All right, can I move to be close to them? Yeah, you can move um, up to 30 feet on your round. Okay, um, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. So that's that, that's yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move towards the one on the right and take Excellent. a swing at them mm -hmm. with my sword. So that is oh, and also they're like super combat mode. They're not like willing to like talk or anything, right? Because I think I would try to yell at them and say like, "Why are you here?" Like, but you um, want to. You can spend your turn standing back uh, where you were and talking to them, or you can fight them. Ooh. But if um, you want to, you know, you got to give them a chance to respond, so you would be foregoing your ability to strike first if you wanted to talk to them. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Is mm -hmm. I was somewhere around here, mm -hmm. probably. Um, yeah, that's close enough. So, that's 30 feet. I'm going to back up. Uh, theoretically out of their range mm -hmm. and try to speak with them. See if they are just completely ignore me or if they try to talk with me. Great. What do you want to say to these creatures before you? Um, I'm going to say, who are you? Why are you here? Um, I don't want to hurt you. Try and get that out in six seconds. Yeah, not a problem. You shout out at them, your weapon's drawn, your gear is up. Uh, the creatures have no regard for your words whatsoever and will start advancing on you. But um, with all the shouting going on, I would like Tristel and Pearl to make me perception checks off of their character sheets. Um, you can find the perception roll uh, next to your charisma stat under your skills section. 14 from Freya and Tristel's perception. Actually, 14 is a pass. I'm just trying to hold some tension at the moment. Oh, yeah. So I think Tristel's in the middle of acting out some sort of dynamic scene, you know, gla glass of wine in one hand. You play uh, musical instruments as well, right? So what are you in the middle of doing? What's like the, the big scene that is causing you to not pay attention to the sounds outside? Autumn. 
Um, sorry, can you, you, you can't hear like the audio. It's like piping out of speakers. I don't know how to stop it, but as long as y'all can't hear it, it's fine. Yeah, it's okay, it's amazing. Fine. Yeah, it's fine. So I'm in, the, I, I'm in the middle of singing, kind of doing what I'm doing. Um, after talking about sailors, I can't help but sing a song about sailors. So that's, that's probably where I'm at. Excellent. So in the middle of the song, Pearl, you hear the sound of shouting something like, what are you doing here? Are you a threat? You know, wake up. And you're hearing this noise coming from the outside, and it's definitely caught your attention, despite what is undoubtedly a fantastic performance by our bard. Uh, Tristel, I, I think I'm hearing something outside. I don't know what's happening, but it sounds serious. We should probably... It was a beautiful song. I, I'm sorry, but something is happening outside. We should head out. Oh, well, fair enough. I shouldn't dwell on these memories too long. All right, why don't you both roll initiative, and we'll continue in combat order. Oh, I didn't select my token. Ah, oh, jeez. I actually don't even know if I have a token to select. You I do. I think you do. Uh, uh, inside you the house. Oh, there it is. Here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to re-roll? Or? No, I've added it manually for okay. you. And I can add you as well. Here we go. There we go. Sue, so, starting off, is going to be Pearl at the beginning of the initiative round. You hear these noises, you interrupt the conversation. Um, go ahead and take your movement or um, whatever it is that you do. Yeah, how do you do the measurement thing? I forget. Um, so when you uh, on the left. your token and you walk with it, you can just right click and it'll give you a, a measurement of distance. Oh, nice. Right. Yeah, you can just tap the right clicks to oh, set gotcha. waypoint. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna gonna run out, uh, grab my staff as quickly as possible, um, mm -hmm. and I guess I'm gonna use my feline agility and just like run as fast as I can out the door uh, because it sounds Great. like it's really serious. Um, so that will double your movement speed for the round. Yes, uh, and that so also means move. that I can't do that the following round. I need to stand still to refresh that ability. Right. Uh, so you can go 60 feet and then still take an action. Uh, so I'm guessing that's somewhere here? Yep, perfect. Okay. Uh, you can pop out over to the railing and you can see these two, they're like more amphibian than lizard-like creatures. You know, they got these spikes coming off of them, these big clawed fingers, these long tails. They got like a little bit of rags on them, but mostly it's just their thick, leathery, oily hides. And you can see them squaring off against the town sheriff just outside of your apartment. Uh, I'm, just gonna shout, yell. I'm just going to yell and be like, Kyra, what are these things? What's happening? They're dangerous and they're not listening to me. <laughs> right. The first of the enemies will go. Seeing the new comer come from the place they were just investigating, this one is going to scramble. Actually, you're at the top of the ladder. That makes it very inconvenient for it to climb up. So it's going to ignore you and it's going to come on over here towards Kyra. Uh, not in like a full-fledged frontal assault, but in sort of, I want to sneak around, you know, like oh, they are fast. them they around fast. you. Yeah, well, it's, uh, they moved and dashed on their turn. Ah, Tristel, uh, cat girl just ran out the door in the middle of your song, bolted out faster than you could possibly imagine someone running. You know, cat's got the zoomies at 3 a.m. That's what this thing is doing. <laughs> and, um, it's your turn. Well, it seemed like she was quite bothered about something. I didn't I didn't hear whatever she's on about, but I guess I'll follow after her. Just kind of come I right out. I see token what's going like on. Still holding a glass of wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's quality. <laughs> per perpetually a glass of wine. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah. yeah, I guess I'm outside. Yeah, you're outside and you have um, the two of you have night vision because you're a half elf and she's mm -hmm. a tabaxi. So you can easily see this creature over here as soon as you like step to the ledge and look down and over. There's two of them. They don't look friendly. I think you still have an action if you want to use it.
nothing's really within range of me. Uh, I guess, how, how can I see measurement? How close the nearest uh, bad boy is? The, there's a tool on the left side that's like a circle with a ruler coming out of it. Um, and that will, if you click and drag. Too far away. Um, oh, well, <laughs> I'll, I'll, just, I'll just go and support my, my friend Pearl over here. The next monster sees the two of you out of here now and decides that the best course of action is just to, you know, have the two of them rush this person over here. Mm -hmm. So it lets out a, a hiss and comes at you. Now it has to dash to get to you, so it can't actually um, make an attack this round. But as it gets close, Kyra, you are overwhelmed by this, like, atrocious smell. It smells like you're in a compost bin that's been sitting in the hot sun for a couple of weeks, you know? Um, so as your turn comes around and you're starting within five feet of the troglodyte, I need you to give me a DC 12 constitution saving throw because the stench is just overwhelming and you pass. Nice. Despite the terrible, the terribleness of this foul. I'm strong willed. You know, I know how to. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> uh, go ahead and take your turn. What do you oh, want right. Do? Um, let's see. Um, I think I'm going to move to the other side of this creature because I can see uh, the two folks on the balcony over there, and I want to position myself between them and these creatures. Mm. So I'm going to do a little shuffle around. Um... Not going within, like, not triggering a attack of opportunity, but just swinging mm -hmm. around to the other side. And I will uh, swing my sword. Um, with an 11. 11 is good enough to hit. You will That's strike funny. the creature that looks something like this, minus the spear. It's... Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. 12 damage. Oh, wow. <laughs> I slice this beast. That is uh, max damage, and the creature before you takes a cut across its back and side Jesus and just Christ. pulls over, <laughs> uh, landing face first in the, in the dirt. Pearl. I yell. Uh, I guess I'll just keep moving. Um, run down and see what's going on down there. Um, so, what's my movement? It's 30, right? Yeah, to climb down the ladder is going to take uh, twice movement because it's climbing. Um, so it is 30 okay. feet to climb the ladder. Uh, and then... I do have a faster climbing speed, though. I don't know if that helps. But... I think that would be if you're, like, climbing a surface with your claws rather than, like, feet and hands on right. hooks and rung. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. About, is it 20 feet, then, or how far can I move? Uh, it would be your... Um, 30 feet down to the ground, which is your movement, and then you can dash if you want for another 30 feet in any direction. Right. Okay. Um, so, actually, what is this range? Um, so, I feel like I should be able to see that pretty clearly, right? Yeah, um, definitely. 80 feet, and that's probably in range of my spells, right? Uh, it depends on which spell you're talking about. Uh, that is true. I'm thinking of Firebolts. Uh, Firebolt has a range of 120 feet. Okay, yeah. uh, then I will, I will cast a firebolt. Uh, well, yep. Why don't you roll firebolt? Uh, but before you do that, why don't you roll on the cantrip surge table? Okay. <laughs> is it before? Excited. Not after. <laughs> Some of the time oh, this spell is interrupted by another effect. Okay. Um, so. Just click the button. It's probably nothing. It's only one Wait. in twenty chance of something happening. It's gonna be fine. Oh, it's fine. you right. coded the one in twenty chance into the table. Yeah, so nice. I actually That's managed good. to leave the game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's how God. badly I rolled. Um, wow, I, I wasn't even on the table. Yeah. Okay. I'm just need to make sure the stream's fine. Everything's loaded. Okay. There we go. I'm sorry. You know, some like. Mice, mouse. What's the plural of these mice? I don't, anyway, the back button is very easy to hit when you move your hand. To it. That's great. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, the character sheet. Am 
Ministry also close to character sheet. Everything just <laughs> failed. Does that count as my uh, stability check? And that was thing that happened? <laughs> no, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> we'll let the table tell us what needs to be done. Okay, it's fine. I, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be fine. Uh, there you go. It's stable. Thanks. Uh, it's totally stable. All right, yeah. make your. Go ahead and make your firebolt attack. All right. There we go. Thirteen. <laughs> 13 wheels streak across the way, smashing the troglodyte in the face. Hell yeah. Cool. Damage. Four We're points. It burns, it sizzles, the creature cries out in pain, and will take its turn, uh, which it does not use to go and attack. Uh, it uses mm -hmm. its turn to reach it, uh, crane its head towards the sky and let out an ear splitting shriek, and then mm -hmm. run away 30 feet and like duck into this little copse of trees over here getting some cover from you guys. Tristel. Hmm. Well, it looks like everyone else is almost taking care of this for me, but I'll just mo <laughs> mosey on down this ladder. <laughs> are are you just like gonna continue our conversation with me and just like, oh, so I was telling you about. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so anyways, as I was saying, sailors. <laughs> <laughs> That's like all we were still stuck on. <laughs> uh, um, okay. So let me just. Okay, so you come to here. Uh, the next troglodyte, this one's dead. Kira, it's your turn. One of them has tried to run from you. Um. Oh. Closer to the town. I follow. Uh, so, but I'm not going to dash. I'm just going to go 30 feet. Um, mm -hmm. What was the thing about like measuring with your token? Uh, when I... you're dragging your token with the left click, you can tap right click to set waypoints. Oh, nice. Okay. Cool. So I am going to move there and then use my action. I am worried that that cry was a signal to others in the area. So I am going to look around the canyon, see if I can find anyone else in this canyon who might be hiding or reacting to this cry. Excellent. Uh, why don't you take your turn to make me a perception check? Uh, this monitor is really small. Yeah, you glance around the canyon, it's the middle of the night, you don't really see anything else. None of these people on the south side even showed up. They must have been, like, well asleep or behind thick enough doors that they didn't hear anything. Uh, okay. All right. Pearl. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just keep uh, moving. Uh, I moved and attacked last round, right? Yes. Okay. Why are you rolling initiatives? This just for funsies. Okay. I'm just clicking right. button. Okay, cool. I was a little worried there for a while. Um, <laughs> Alright, yeah, I'll just move my, um, I guess, 30 feet and uh, dash, I suppose. Because I, I imagine the, the creature is, like, hiding and it might be hard for me to hit it from here, right? Yes, it's going to be behind cover. Um, Probably like three quarters cover, which I think gives it a plus five to AC. Okay. Um, yeah, in that case, I'm, I'm just not going to risk it. Um, so I'll just uh, dash. Move up there, I guess. Mm hmm. Excellent. Um, our creature lets out a, another shriek on its turn, and Tristel comes around. I am oh. not happy about this. I'm worried. <laughs> Mosey on over. Just taking your sweet time. Yeah, just moseying. Okay. <laughs> cool. Am I Sounds allowed to fun. suggest actions to other players? Mm-hmm. Uh, can you... Can you know, reasonable or... Yeah, so I'm thinking that uh, you know that I'm not very good at dark vision. And so... Um, Hopefully you have the same idea that that call might have been um, someone calling for help. And so do you look around to see if there's creatures with your dark vision? Yeah, I feel Me? like both of us should 
do you want? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, we're, we're running towards this monster. Could, like, can we look around and say, is there any more danger? Like, anything kind of um, that we noticed? Why don't you also give me a perception check, Tristel? It's probably just, like, crying out for its mom. You know, it's about to die. It's afraid. <laughs> it's just, like, shrieks of panic. It's unlikely that there's anything else nearby. And with a 13, you don't see anything else. Okay. It's fine. It's totally fine. Uh, still your turn, Kira. Tristel. No, Kira. Wait. Well, we've moved on from Tristel. She's oh. finished her turn. Okay. It's now Kira's turn. Right. Um, let's see. So... I will make it. I will come around and ah, take a swing. The creature has a readied attack. It's been waiting oh, for you to get here. And it has readied an action uh, with a claw. So it slashes out at you with a 19 to hit. Yeah. Um, for six piercing damage. Six damage. Yeah, you come around these trees, it leaps out at you, it gets a claw right into your face, digging its nails into your cheek Oof. and neck and reeking your body with it. And it is Ouch. your turn. That hurts. I am mad now and I take a swing um, with my longsword. 11 is a hit. You catch the creature in its soft underside and oh my God, another <laughs> incredible damage roll. Uh, the troglodyte topples over. The overwhelming smell of it still making you nauseous, but <laughs> you're gonna be okay. Um, yeah. And that is when you can hear the next one appearing. Uh, Tristel, you can hear the sounds of splashing in the water as another one of these weird looking creatures comes from up the canyon a little bit. And that will be Pearl's turn. I don't think Pearl's noticed this one yet, but Giselle has. Um, uh, right. Pearl, you are starting your turn within five feet of a troglodyte. Even though it is dead, it still smells. Thank you. <laughs> um, oh, no. So I need you to make a con check. And I have a, before you make the check, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Do cats have a good sense of smell? Probably, yeah. <laughs> you say it's stronger than a human sense of smell. Can you just you tell me how I'm going to suffer really from being close really to this <laughs> carcass? <somewhere>? Might be <laughs> more difficult for a cat to overcome, or do you think the sense of smell isn't so acute that you wouldn't have some sort of penalty to your gag reflex check on? You this? know what? A penalty um, now means an advantage later. Exactly. So you know what? I'm going to take it. This just reeks <laughs> to me. Yep. Yeah. It's, what it's if terrible. you make your save at disadvantage? Oh, okay. So roll it twice to take the lower of the two. E yeah. Well. Well, it is gross. It is nasty. It makes you gag. You are poisoned until the start of your next turn or until you get to make a save, a successful save. Uh, what does the poison do? How dangerous is it? So the condition called poisoned, because that's like not the same as having poison in your system, but there is the poisoned condition, which gives you disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. It's just sort of like you're gagging, you're a little nauseous. It's just a little harder to function while you're just like, Ugh. you know. Okay. Um, um, yeah, so so when does this go away? Do I need to like succeed on a save? Uh, let's see. Poison until the start of the creature's next turn. So you'll just be poisoned until the start, I guess until the end, oof, it's dead. So, oh no, on your next turn, it'll go away. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, great. Uh, I kind of wanted to just stand still to refresh my feline agility, mm. but I don't think it's a good idea to stand here, so. Mm -mm. Um, yeah. Okay, I, I guess I'm just like really just recoiling from this absolutely terrible stench and I'll just move probably back up and to the stone there and try not to vomit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. You catch yourself, prevent yourself from spilling your guts everywhere as Tristel takes their turn. And this is when you're hearing that splashing in the river upstream. Um, how far upstream do I hear it? Uh, you can turn around and see it's about 80 feet from you. It's coming pretty close. Oh 
go over here and see if I can inspect. Oh. I hear some something afoot. Yeah, and when you get to that spot, actually, you can also see another one slinking around this tree. Oh, there are no. at least two more troglodytes here. What are you going to do? Um, I'm going to yell, Oh, there's more over here. We're not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they can hear me. Okay. Uh, any other movement? I think you've still got another 15, 20, 30 feet, something like that. Uh, do I? Uh, I don't remember exactly how far you moved. You're like over here or something. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so you've got like another 15 feet and a dash if you want, or not, you know. I'll, I'll scoot. I'll scoot. Are you sure closer. you don't want my protection? Oh, great, yeah, get <laughs> Listen, closer. Uh, I can I can handle my own. I will, however, proceed with caution. Nice idea. All right. Uh, the next troglodyte will take its turn. It will scurry here, and then it sees this like unarmed woman. You know, she's like ha- she's hanging out. She looks like she's having a good time. Definitely doesn't look like a combat capable warrior to this primitive uh, amphibian like creature. So excitedly, it will hurry on towards you as quickly as its little feet will take it. Yes, will completely underestimate you. Um, and that's when a third one appears from upriver as well. Oh God, jeez. And mm. Kira, Kyra. All right, so I'm going to do a double movement for 60 feet. Mm-hmm. Or like take my action to move. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's my turn. Okay. This one over here will do a similar thing. It'll move along the river and come right up to Tristel. Unfortunately, it can't make an attack roll this round because it used all it had to move to get close, and it becomes Pearl turn. Jesus Christ, Tristel is in danger. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> help! Help! <laughs> um. Okay. So. Uh, goodness. Okay. Uh, I guess I will. Uh, I need to move into position first and foremost. Um, mm-hmm. Why am I on such a decimal point? Oh, are we using Euclidean distance? Yes. Nice. Okay. Um, I do appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, uh, I guess I'll stand by the edge of the water here. Um, mm-hmm. And there we go, I turned around. You didn't have to do it this time. Thank you. Uh, uh, any other actions? That was just a movement, right? Yes, uh, trying to figure out if I should cast a spell or if I should just do cantrips. Uh, I actually don't know if magic missile does that much more damage. Um, I don't know if it's- 10 and a half on good. average. Um, you know what? I'm just going to cast Firebolt. Um, Love it. Can trip okay. surge oh, table. Oh, yep. It's probably going to be fine. We're fine. So Christ. fine. Totally fine. So. All right. Firebolt. Hell no. And <laughs> you will crit. I assume you're striking this one right here. Yes. Uh, it is a perfect shot. You catch the creature right in the face. The fire wraps around it for... How do I roll the crit damage, actually? Uh, just click the firebolt, and it will automatically roll the crit uh, damage for you. Oh, nice. Three points for four. Ten points of damage. Flames erupt across the creature. It gasps. Uh, Tristel will take their turn and make me a constitution saving throw because the stench of this creature is terrible. And when it's on fire, oh my god, it's even worse. Stinky, so stinky. Okay. Mm-hmm. Totally fine. Totally fine. You managed to hold back the retching, but uh, it is here now. What are you going to do? Very disgusting, but I can manage. Um, I'd like to cast Bane um, because I want these bad boys to get the heck away and not hit me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so click the Bane um, spell, and you get multiple targets with that, don't you? Uh-huh. Three creatures Both of your choice these. that you can see within range, and the range is 30 feet, 30. so you these can hit ones. these two for Sherzies. Yeah, excellent. And they don't get a saving throw, right? They're just, they're just baned. It says they must make a charisma saving throw. Oh, yes, yes. I am illiterate, apparently. Um, here we go. Charisma saving throw for the troglodyte below you. Uh, is a natural 20 with a minus two. So it's an 18 that still succeeds. And the one in front of you is a failure, I believe. Um, but let's be sure and double check. Your spell save DC is... Should be at the top of your character sheet on the oh. spells tab. Fourteen. Yeah, so they would need a fourteen or higher to pass, and they certainly do not. The second one certainly nice. does not have that one. It is going to be baned. Bane. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, that is the very next creature to go, and it is overwhelmed by this sense of dread, this sense of magic-induced penalties. Creature wasn't really ready for that. You know, these troglodytes were just here poking around the houses, looking in the town. It's a little concerned, so it's going to make a morale check now that it's been targeted with a spell and seen its friends get blasted with spells. One spellcaster, maybe you can handle two spellcasters? That's some scary shit. Um, and this troglodyte isn't going to have any of it. It's going to think better of this moment and take the opportunity to flee back in the other direction. Uh, uh -huh. It's ally seeing it run away will pass its morale check and you know we'll deal with this coward later we'll kill these people then go talk to john see why he's running away you know it's gotta deal with these guys kira damn it john all right i continue running um let's see 60 will not make it and that's my turn all I can't right. do anything else useful, right? I think that's do it. Do you have um, any bonus action abilities? Uh, nope. Just second wind and fighting style. Second wind is a bonus action if you would like. I don't know if you I don't want. I'm going to use it. Yeah. Nice. Uh, the next troglodyte is up. It is right here below Kira. It was not affected by the Bane spell, and so it is going to get its full complement of attacks off, which is two claws and a bite. So the first claw reaches out for you, Tristel, with an eight. The second one slashes with a five. And lastly, it will try to nibble at your ankles with an 18, which will succeed. And it will rend your flesh for five points of damage, kind of ripping your dress in the process. And uh, you will go down to three. Pearl. Oh, um, is there any way I can target the one with a lot of health or maybe that's a bad idea you can but it's going to be behind cover so it'll have a, a bonus of two to its ac okay um hmm hmm hmm, hmm. <laughs> i'm trying to figure out if i should do magic missile and target both of them but i'm kind of scared of my surge table <laughs> <laughs> um, go for it I feel like the one with low health should die if I do a magic missile. I think. Um, how many? How many missiles? Well, do magic I get? missile produces three darts, three missiles. Each one does D4 plus one damage, and you can distribute them as you please. So you can do one on each of the troglodytes and one on Tristel if you want. You could do all three on one of the troglodytes. You know, whatever feels comfortable for you. Um. Okay. Uh, oh, I just clicked it. I thought that would drop the info in chat. That did not drop the info in chat. No. Um, it, uh, it rolled the first of the dice. You'll have to roll the other two manually. Um, um, oh, do I roll one for each missile? Technically, the rules are you roll one die and each of the missiles does that amount of damage. But I think rolling more dice is more fun. <laughs> yeah. So... I encourage you to roll each one independently, but before you roll the rest of them, tell me how you're tar uh, distributing them. I'm going to target the one with low health with one missile and the other one with two missiles. Okay. Roll me 2d4 plus two. 
do we need to roll for the other missiles, or do you... uh, this one? The first one does four. Oh, okay. It just off four, um, which will strike this guy and actually drop him to zero. Nice. Nice. Two D four plus two. Mm -hmm. Yes. It got seven nice. points of damage. Will sunder the other, and oh. it will also collapse in the ground. My but surge table. I, I do believe we need you to roll me a 1d20 and don't roll a 1, otherwise it's a wild surge time and everyone's grouped together, so don't roll a 1. You know, I've been fearing this moment. <laughs> uh, yeah, 1D20 you asked for this. I know, but, you know, okay, we're fine. We're good. It's all good. Uh, that is two more of these creatures dead. Tristel, you got your spells off. Uh, one of them fled, and then the other two were butchered from behind. What are you going to do? Well, first of all, I'll, I'll take a moment to just. All right, we're good. Mourn, mourn the loss of or uh, th this dress being torn. Um, so this one's running away. Yeah. Do we want to mm -hmm. let it get away? I would like to let it get away. I think <laughs> I've had enough excitement <laughs> for now. I'm very low health. All right, cool. You can just chill. Uh, the troglodyte will take its turn. And it will move its full complement and, you know, just disappear behind rocks and bushes running upstream. Uh, not yelling like the other ones, just getting the hell out of here as fast as its amphibian legs will carry it. Uh, if no one else is going to chase, we can slip out of combat here and I... return to... Were you going to chase? No, I was just going to, like, walk over and protect people, but we're good. Yeah. Oh, Pearl, you saved me. <laughs> That seemed really dangerous. I got my dress. How could you just walk into both of them? These things seem dangerous. Well, they underestimated me. I did scare off one of them. Well, that's good, at least. Where did these things come from? Asking Kyra. Well, they certainly weren't, uh, weren't willing to talk. Um... I'm worried about more of them. I'm going to start increasing patrols and make sure this town is safe. Mm. What are you going to do with the bodies? They're, They're like real smelly. Oh, they smell. I'm not touching what those bodies. I <laughs> Leave me out of this. Kids in the canyon. We can always can't roll just... them into the river. Not the river. Uh, I, That's um, drinking water. <laughs> I want to be able to inspect them. Um, and so... First, I will just inspect them right now, see if there's, like, anything interesting on them. Um, if I don't think... Um, if I think that someone else in town is a better monster inspector than me, who might know more lore than me, then I'm going to pile these bodies into a um, underused corner and try and find someone who might be able to know more about these creatures. And I will I not dump them into the river or bury them. I think it's probably you and your family that are the most knowledgeable about these things. Your father before you was the town sheriff, if I recall correctly. Yep. Um, and you guys have the most knowledge with these sorts of things. Um, no one else in town is really well equipped for this. Maybe your deputies might be, but you're probably no more than they do because you've been taught by the, the warriors of past generations. Well, what about us hunters? Or do we, like, hunt other creatures rather than these? Or... These are definitely not things that you would hunt, and right. you have not seen any things like this before. These are, um, you know, humanoid monsters of some kind. Completely foreign to this area, as far as you're concerned. Just like me. I can relate to these dead, stinky creatures. <laughs> oh, they're friends! <laughs> Kindred spirits, if you will. So my primary uh, thing that I want to figure out while I'm looking at these bodies is why were they here? Do they have anything on them um, that would indicate why they're here? So maybe like any notes, any tools that might um, indicate anything? Yeah. Excellent. While you gather the bodies to inspect them, why don't we take our first break? And when we come back, we will handle the investigation of these creatures. All right. Sounds good. Uh, yeah. All right. We'll be back after the break. Mm -hmm. 
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Embers of the Wilds. Our party has gathered forth the bodies of these dead troglodytes. They're gross. And in the light of the moon, you are investigating them, trying to look for clues as to who they are and why they might be here, uh, if I recall correctly. I am not that close. I am behind this rock <laughs> looking Excellent. at them. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> well... Um, let's talk about what we can see right away. As we okay. mentioned before, they're humanoids. They're intelligent. I mean, they might not be like super smart, but they're intelligent enough creatures that have their own language and um, tool use, even though these guys aren't carrying any weapons. They've got some like scraps of clothing on them to cover their backs. Um, they attack at night or they came here at night, which either means they've got infravision like you guys, or they're just super freaking careful. Um, why don't we have each of you roll me an investigation check to see if there's anything else we can learn about them. Ah, here we go. So, Autumn, you're going to notice a couple of things about these creatures. The first thing you spot is that there are some freshly healed wounds on two of these guys. Maybe a couple weeks, maybe a month old at most. And they don't look like claw marks. These guys have been like fighting with tooth and claw. This looks like an actual axe wound. Like someone hacked into one of these guys with a real weapon, but the thing survived long enough to be out here doing stuff again a week mm -hmm. or two later. Um, and the other thing, you rolled a 16. Uh, right. The other thing that you're going to notice is that they're kind of thin. They look like they haven't been well fed. They're maybe a little bit on the hungry side. You know, you can like when you look at a cat, you can just barely see the ribs along the sides. That's kind of the feeling you're getting from these guys. Interesting. So I'm, I'm looking at them, I notice these things, um, ah oh yes, but like a skinny one. Yeah, a skinny boy. These things look underfed for sure, but it looks like somebody's already had a go at them. Hira, uh, has anyone reported beasts like this roaming around? No, I presume? Mm -mm. Okay, so here's here's my theory, is that these are natives from a nearby land, and I am scared that because we know that none of this town attacked uh, this creature, my theory is that somebody else displaced these creatures from their land, and now they're trying to scavenge from us. Or the other people coerce them into doing scouting on us, but that's that's paranoid. Um, so I'm worried about maybe some humans around here who might not be friendly to Trog. Maybe not super close just yet, but I'm worried. Uh, I'm gonna walk around and see if I can see any any more like nearby in the area. Make me a perception check. There's definitely none of them up that canyon. You know, this is a, a small tributary that leads into Trog Canyon. It ends maybe a half mile up a, up the path or something in sort of a bit of a, a box canyon that becomes impassable. There's definitely no way that there's anyone there. Okay. Yeah. Well, no one else in the town has woken up yet. Um, the cries and the sounds of battle were brief. And it seems everyone slept through it or woke up and dismissed it and went back to bed. Okay. What do we do with these bodies? Uh, just first off, would I be worried that nobody answered or is, would that be normal to me? That's kind of reasonable. You know, it's pretty okay. late at night. The walls are thick. Nobody's been assassinated in their sleep. Sort of thing. I mean... Probably not. Probably not. It's <laughs> fine. It's fine. Okay. Hmm. 
Mm. Can we see some... Can we see footprints on the ground? Can we see where they came from? Absolutely. Um, there are wet marks in the, gra- uh, the the soil here from where they walk through the water, and there is the deep impressions that their uh, three-toed feet make. Mm. Do all of them come from the, the river? Yeah, they all seem to be coming from down this direction. The only other pathways that they make are when the other one like went over here behind the bush, and then the drag marks of you bringing the bodies back in this direction. So um, the footprints lead up this way, and then you know there's water here, so they'll probably get lost and refound again on the other side. But you'd have to I go think I wanna up river. Investigate. Yeah, I want to go up river a slight bit, still like sort of within sight of the town, just like keep on following, see see what I can find. Sure. Why don't you drag yourself to where you want to go? And while you're doing that, are the other two of you following along? Or are you going to stick back and investigate this stuff? Uh, I think I would be following along, because it seems dangerous to go alone in general right now. Um, mm-hmm. mm, agreed. Yeah. Um, dangerous to go alone. Take a Kira. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Wait, where is, where's Kyra? She ran ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I assume that I would back up if anything triggered along my path. There. Yeah, you, you don't see anything here. You do see a whole bunch of footprints in this area, though. Some of them wet, some of them fairly recent, uh, most of them fairly recent, that kind of mill about here as if all five of the creatures were here chatting before they came into town. Uh, and no then, other footprints, right? Mm-mm. Maybe some old footprints of humans in the town. You know, you walk here, the footprints stay until the next rain or whatever. Um, But all the fresh ones look like these creatures. And then they would get lost in this section. Maybe you could pick them up again. Depends if they came down the waterway or came down the the pathway on the side. But Mm. no sign of them at this point. Did they seem amphibious? I guess based on their feet? like. Mm Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, I would assume at some point they start swimming. Or yeah. Like backward swimming. Um, do we want to keep going? I'm not sure. I'm a little worried we might not be prepared for what might be out there. Mm-hmm. And we also need to deal with the bodies and what to do with them in town. I'm guessing the townspeople are going to be questioning what's happened. I wonder if we should... I wonder if we should leave the bodies somewhere here as a warning for any others that might try to come into town and we might also need to rest before we head out for an adventure so my my thought was i will wake up some of my deputies make them take over the watch so i can do a rest for the night okay um so the three of you will rest for tonight the deputies will Mm -hmm. take over the watch and we'll pick everything back up (laughs) the next morning yeah uh, higher watch than normal. So if like one person is usually on watch, I want to send out like two people. Yeah, sure you've got two okay. deputies total with okay. you. Um, do you want them to be one on either end of the town, or do you want them to like work together and stay on one side of the town? Um, these creatures were pretty dangerous, so I want them to stay together. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. And so I assume checking this west end of town. Yeah. Um. Maybe, like, every hour go to the other end of town. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, patrol the whole thing, but primarily keep an eye on, on this side. Maybe we can have yeah. some of the regular civilians uh, help keep watch, at the very least, and be alert, mm. and just let the sheriffs or deputies know. That's a good idea. Yeah. So, who wants to go wake up one of these townsfolk and tell them that you're conscripting them for, <laughs> for night duty? I will, because I'm respected, and mm. my approach will be, hey, we were just attacked. If you want to stay up and keep watch, uh, feel free. Um, and then I will keep on doing this until I find someone who will stay up, and I feel like it's pretty likely that someone's going to be like, oh, shit, we were attacked. Yeah. Let's uh, stay up. Yeah. So you come to someone's door and you're like, yo, we've just been attacked. Look, I'm wounded. I'm going to go to bed, but keep an eye out in case there's any monsters. <laughs> Wait, that's, that's the Hard state there to support you. <laughs> um, 
All right. The first person you're going to come across is going to be one of the foresters. These are the people that like bring back, uh, it's kind of like foragers, gatherers, but also people who will manage the forest and like pluck birds' eggs and whatnot and maybe catch some small game here and there. Not full fledged hunters, but um, sort of that mixed position. And they will, of course, be like, oh my God, what do you mean something attacks you in the night? There's these um, fishy creatures that were sneaking around town. I tried to talk to them, and they just straight up attacked me and uh, really injured me, like points at my face. Should, should we ring the, the church bells? Get the mayor up? Should we, should we alert the whole town? Oh my god, are we in danger? Are my children in danger? I don't think we're in danger, no. Um, I think this is just a small group of displaced creatures. I just don't want the town... If there is, like, one or two more hanging around... Well, what if there's uh, ten more? Or twenty more? I don't more? think there's ten more. Are you sure? Uh, I am. I will um, <laughs> try and use my my charisma as the town sheriff to comfort this person and say, I have it all under control. Everything's fine. We have great warriors in this town. Well, maybe not great warriors, but uh, people able to fight. And we will be fine. We just need some eyes to make sure that the people who are able to fight um, are not caught unaware. Okay. Um, give me a persuasion check, and we'll see how well this works out for you. Yeah. The townsfolk is persuaded by you. They will uh, send their children back to bed come out and keep an eye on the railing uh, ready to scream and shout. They'll also like grab a couple of other neighbors to keep them company and in case okay. something goes on they'll you know organize an extra watch. And our party can go back to bed. Cool. I take it the night's festivities are over between Pearl and Tristel? I think so yeah. Everything took a very serious turn all of a sudden so I, I, need, I need a new dress. I'm sorry. Or to, to fix this one. How bad is the damage? You tell me. Is it a, a small tear or is it like a, a massive rend? I guess what are the size of those um, boys? Uh, they're six feet tall. Probably like a, a rend. It was kind of like a hit. Mm -hmm. Um Probably a wren, mm. something that I'd have to sew up pretty nicely, or maybe even get a new garment. What a shame. Is there I a weaver in town? I imagine there has to be. There is. There are two tailors right. in town. Yes, or two families of tailors. Everything here is organized by like family occupant uh, occupation. So they can help fix things or produce new garments for you as you please. Okay, um, I feel like we, we should let the, let the mayor know about what's happening so that we are at yeah. least a little bit more prepared than completely unprepared. I'm, I'm guessing we don't want to alert the entire town of what's happening. It might be... Yeah, don't panic power, in the but middle of the night. I feel like the mayor, the mayor has to know. Mm -hmm. See if they have any advice for us. Uh, did you want to alert them tonight or wait till the morning? Tonight. Tonight? Definitely okay. Tonight. Okay, I'm, so... I'm guessing I'm going to head to bed. I don't know if it's good that I do this talking to the townspeople. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I can go around on my own talking to townspeople and then mayor. Because if I'm going to wake up a townsperson, the mayor is not higher on the respect of, like, don't wake them up in the middle of the night than a, than a townsperson. Actually, right, maybe right. I'll talk to the cleric, because the cleric and I have been talking before. We're friends, mm. so... Okay, so... Pearl's going to go talk to Annabelle, the cleric. Um, Kira's going to go talk to Barnaby, the mayor. Tristel, what do you want to do with your evening? Your night? My evening? Well, the tailor probably isn't available to help me with this dress. Mm -mm. Um, I think I should probably rest. Because well, I've taken a fair amount of damage. Okay. Uh, I forget, uh, where's the uh, temple? back to Greta and Eva's place where you are staying. The temple is 
uh, this building over here. Hmm. Okay. We will get some labels on these in the near future. Awesome. Uh, so why don't we... Why don't we do this in the order of the temple and then the mayor? Because the mayor lives uh, further east in town. So you can get to the temple, knock on the door, or actually come inside and knock on Annabelle's door itself. And she will awaken and come to see you, look at you, and say, Pearl, my my dear, what, what, wake, what causes you to wake me in the middle of the night? I'm really sorry to wake you at this hour, uh, but... It don't don't panic but we were just attacked by some weird lizard like creatures is everyone okay is anyone hurt uh a little bit yeah kyra and tristel were hurt yeah i'm i'm fine but it seems like these creatures might be pretty dangerous i don't really know what to do i want to be really careful to not make everyone in town panic but we should we should be on alert if anything more happens uh, we're gonna put more sheriffs or deputies out to keep watch, uh, but I, yeah, I'm a little scared. I don't really know what we're what we're gonna do, but yeah. Uh, she will ask you to lead her to the two wounded people because she is a cleric of Martha with healing spells at her disposal and you know um, medicine checks available to to patch people up. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I guess Tristel and Kyra are already on the way further east, and she'll just follow. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, when she yep. gets to me, um... Where are the you map at... is... Sorry. Um, uh, I, I guess where, where the map's in my Yes, you are on the far, far other side, way over here on the far east south side of town. This is the the old inn with like uh, tables outside and a nice big building and a whole bunch of rooms in there. And you are the only guest, but sometimes people come here to the restaurant to like eat and hang out. Um, right, so the, the cleric will come and find Tristel before she gets to the inn and will give you a single healing spell. Try and patch you up. Um, that did not roll. So you will heal 1d8 plus 4. So she nice. will heal you 9, which is nice. quite good. 20. Uh, mm -hmm. And I guess she'll also go find the town sheriff and heal you as well. Um, for 11. Shoot. I was going to stop her. Um, you can stop her. That's fine. So I'm I was sure. gonna say, um, if you have limited spell slots, I don't know how to say that in in world. Spell um, slots is fine. I am, um, um, I'm fine. I can like use my um, shoot. What's it called? Uh, second wind to heal myself if needed, and I don't want you wasting a spell slot on me if other people get injured if these creatures come back um because like i'll be fine so that's very selfless of you there's a reason that you are well respected as the sheriff of the town actions like yeah. this help uh in ingratiate you to us all um be careful tonight and if you change your mind to come by uh, I'm the cleric of Martha. After all, I'm here to serve and heal and protect. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You are a all blessing right. to this town. Oh. All right. She will go back to bed, and then you will arrive at the mayor's office. Mayor Barnaby. He's <laughs> fifty. He's forty-two years old, and uh, he's had this position for the last ten years. And he's also in charge of like overseeing the mines because the mines are now a public resource and making sure everything goes pretty well. Uh, he'll be awoken in the night, a little grumpy about all this, coming to the door, <laughs> rubbing the sleep out of his eyes. He'll see you and... What is it, Kyra? Why have you woken me from my bed? <laughs> We've been attacked and we need you to be aware of the situation and how to organize this town. Uh, we don't know. Some creatures of um, these fishy creatures, they didn't seem to want to talk or they couldn't talk. I'm not really sure. Not uh, but bandits, they were very... then, right? No, not bandits. Um, uh -huh. Very aggressive. Is it done? Though. 
Yes. Oh. Uh, we are you... safe for now. Oh, oh. good. <laughs> Great. Um... Great. You're, you're an asset to the town. Good job. <laughs> you earned your pay today. <laughs> Is there um... anything else? I guess the bodies. I wanted to relay the situation of what happened to you in case you had any opinions on what we should do as this town, because you are in charge of this town. Um, oh, I am you... die. <laughs> <laughs> Let me if go get like... my mayoral vest. We'll, we'll go take a look at the bodies, see what's going on. All right. And he'll um, head back inside to get his mayoral vest, the, the garment that de delineates who is in charge of the town. And, awesome. Uh, He'll come on out and take a look at the bodies with you. Hold his nose back at the stench of them. Poke him with his foot a little bit. I'll yeah. relay my theory of maybe these were displaced creatures. Um, yeah. Yeah, it sounds likely. You think there's more of them? Uh, who knows? At this point, I want to be ready for more if there are. Well, why don't you, you know... Send someone off to go take a look. Maybe the uh, that cat girl with the magic, you know? <laughs> I don't think we're capable. ready for that. I think well, we want I think we want to wait until morning when we're more ready. Of course, of course. It's definitely yeah. not in the middle of the night, but you know. Okay. Okay. Got to find out where they came from, right? Don't want more of them showing up at the door. Of course. Or if there are, we, you know, be ready for it. Mhm. Mm most definitely, sir. Yeah. What are you going to do with the corpses? Um, bury them once we have figured out um, all that we can from them. And it seems that we yeah. have figured out everything. So, yeah. I hope you figure it out fast. As soon as the <laughs> wind speech direction, the whole town's going to smell like crap. Indeed. Okay. Well, good night then, Sheriff. See you in the morning. Good night. And uh, you guys can all pass out for the evening. There are no further incidents that day or that evening. Um, but when you all wake up in the morning, about half the town has been gathered around these corpses sitting out over here. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, keeping, uh, you know, everyone's interested to see what's going on. The bodies have been sort of rearranged, spread out a little bit so people can kind of get close and take a look at them. Uh, they've been like, flipped onto their backs with their bellies up, and there's a lot of chatter, a lot of theories of what they might be, who, where they might have come from. When your father, Mr. Sh Miss Sheriff, will pipe up and give them the name Troglodyte and tell you that these amphibian-like creatures are... Well, they're not bright. Might be fair to even call them dumb. They're nocturnal creatures and usually subterranean. Don't like to come to the surface unless they've got a good reason. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Not too bright. As I said before, you usually use a tooth claw, maybe a javelin or a spear. And, uh... Makes sense. I don't know. They prefer frontal attacks to ambushes. You know, they're kind of just run in there, grab some stuff, get on out, but coming into towns like this yeah, in these small numbers sneaking Weird. around yeah. it's unusual behavior for things like this if it wasn't so for my bad hip and my bad knees I'd be out there looking with them for you but you know how it goes indeed we shall indeed uh, go out and look for these um and also I'm not super worried about this like gathering of people around this bodies I try to run this town as a open information so yeah that's great i'll like manage yeah. some manage some panic or whatever but mm -hmm. i um, also that... um don't want these bodies to be like desecrated like if things start going too far then i'm gonna call a stop and say like no stop like fucking poking around these bodies let's bury them yeah i mean at best they're poking in with sticks uh, right. No one's, like, hacking into it or carving them. No one even yeah. remotely suggests carving them up for food because they're gross and disgusting <laughs> and semi-intelligent creatures. So they just, you know, they leave them be. Um, those of you that slept for a night can roll one hit die to recover HP. Um, 
So that would be, well, Christelle's already full from the, the cleric mm. healing, which is nice. But Kyra, why don't you roll us a hit die? Uh, for you, that's going to be a d10 plus your con mod. Oh, plus con, uh, which yeah. is uh, plus three. So nine. Nine, which will bring you to full, I believe. Nice. Yeah, I don't know where my token is. I have no idea. Um, are we all standing like with the crowd and the bodies and whatnot? Or uh, if you would oh, like to be, on. but you can also be wherever you want. I think I would mostly hang out on my balcony. Okay. So, yeah, here's some tokens. We can have multiple tokens. That's fine. Um, so no, I was off to the west. Yeah. Ah, perfect. Uh, players, what is the plan? Oh, I should also get a hit tight, right? Or no, wait, I don't need to heal. Never you're mind. full, so you're right. fine. Yeah. I'm just constantly hurt. No <laughs> um, so what's the plan? You know, everyone's here gathered, looking around, asking questions, wanting to know what's up. And you guys have talked about following these things, but haven't done it yet. Is that a today activity? Not... Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think we'll start off going to the west, um, try and pick up the tracks where we left off, and mm -hmm. see where that leads. Great. And I'll tell someone to bury the bodies. Yeah, one of your deputies can do it. They will. The graveyard that you guys use is um, far to the east. At the end of the river, the canyon kind of opens up into a, a bit of a plain, and there's an old graveyard there from you know decades and decades ago that you continue to inter your corpses in. Uh, some corpses. Most of your people are actually left here in um, the catacombs within the temple, but some people prefer the the old graveyard where their old families are. These people, these monsters, aren't the like put them in the nice catacombs in our town sort of creatures. So chuck them in the old graveyard, uh, and the party's off to hunt these things down. So we're going to need uh, some sort of tracking check to see if you can figure out where they, these things are, came from. Okay, um, I think tracking. that is survival. Mm -hmm. Let me double check. Uh, do we all roll? Or? Uh, the person with the highest skill will roll. And then if one of you is trained in survival, you can assist them and give them advantage on the roll. Uh, nope. I have three. Two. One. Nice. Okay, so three <laughs> rolls it. 13. That's going to work, but it's gonna be slow. You're gonna like find the trail and you're gonna lose it again, find it again and lose it again as you make your way up the canyon. Uh, the tracks will go all the way out of the canyon. It'll take you maybe like six hours to leave the canyon and enter into the, the high forest above the, the area where you guys live. Out here, it's a little bit more grassy. It's still a little rocky, but you don't have the tall spires and the towering walls around you. Um, and once you get to this zone, the trail gets a little harder to find. But after many hours, you will come to a cave, kind of out in the middle of the woods. Um, it's not a large cave. In fact, it's it's quite a small one, and the tracks seem to lead here. Uh, you can see signs of creatures having been in the area for a short period of time. There's some refuse and animal bones outside of the little cave, and... Uh, there are clear signs of the creature having come back this way. You know, you can see it limping. Uh, actually, no, this one wasn't wounded. You can see its tail marks having brushed aside um, twigs, branches, little bits of leaves, uh, pine needles that have fallen down and gone, at least in the direction of the cave. Outside the cave mouth, there's a whole bunch of, like, marks all over the direction as if many creatures have been here recently. So it's impossible to tell if the creature like came and went into the cave or came and like went in the same direction as one of these other sets of tracks. Party. What type are the other tracks? Are those also creature tracks or? Uh, well, to get a good look, you'd have to go all the way up to where they are. So from where you're standing at the, you know, 
probably hiding amongst the trees while you talk amongst yourselves. You're not close enough to get a, a really good look at those markings. Mm. Uh, okay, can I... I, I want to try to be a little bit silent. I don't want to make too much noise. Um, mm -hmm. Can I move up behind this tree and look yeah. down the cave, like into the darkness? Do I see anything in there? Give me a stealth check first to see if you can do this quietly in the woods. Um... Okay. Such a bad roll. <laughs> it is uh, not a great roll. Yeah. You will make your way over there, trying to look behind a tree or so, but some brushling, uh, brushing noises, some rustling. You can see the cave is not very deep at all. It's very, very shallow. And in the cave at present is one of the creatures. But it seems to be curled up asleep at the back of the cave. Oh. Unconscious. Daylight hours. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm just going to slowly walk back to the others and, and just tell them that, oh, that there's... There's one of them in there in the cave. I think that might be the one that we we let escape. Um, it's sleeping in there. I don't know if we should. Kyra, is it possible to talk to these creatures at all? Or uh, I tried for a very brief moment. I don't think so, but they might have to be very careful to not aggravate it into attacking. Hmm. Um, did you say there was additional tracks going to the northeast, or...? Yeah, there's tracks all in this area, and they head out that way, and they head out that way, and they come down this way. Okay, um, is it possible for me to circle way around, like, back up, circle around, come mm -hmm. back up from, like, the northeast direction, um, and see if these tracks are all troglodyte? Yeah, totally. Um, so why don't you back around and do that while you are investigating? Do the other two of you have any things you want to do, or are you just waiting to get the results of the survey? Um, I'm not sure. I think I'm still trying to figure out if I should try to talk to it. Um, cause like, I think I always feel a little uncomfortable killing other humanoid creatures <laughs> in general. Um, cause I can sort of see myself in them. So I think I always have this little instinct that maybe I should see if I can talk to them if they are, if it's possible to reason with them. Um, where was that instinct last night when you were throwing firebolts around? You no, know, cause then they were attacking my friends. I, mm. I have, I draw ah, okay. lines. Protect. Um, Protect. But I, hmm, I do have animal handling proficiency. But I don't know if that's going to help in this case, because they seem to be very angry little creatures. Yeah. Um, animal handling's more like domesticated herd animals, or maybe like something that's semi-wild. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I would just be kind of cautious, and I would like to, like, I don't know, is it possible to ready actions in case mm -hmm. something happens or if something goes wrong? Um, yes. What action would you like to have readied, and what are the conditions under which it would be activated? I would ready a firebolt, and the condition is if I see one of my friends getting attacked, or myself getting attacked. Okay, cool. So you can hold the firebolt, which is essentially casting the spell, but like holding the last syllable or the last gesture. Um, since this is not a spell slot spell, it doesn't really matter, but after a period of time, it will automatically fizzle. And so with a cantrip, you can just keep writing it over and over and over again. How does that work with a search table? That's a great question. Does it happen as I ready the action or when it goes off? It would be when it goes off. Um, when you ready a spell, you cast as normal, hold the energy. To be ready, the spell must have a casting time one action. Do 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 do. Uh, if your concentration is broken, the spell dissipates without taking effect. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, it will roll on the wild surge as soon as it happens. Okay. Yep. What about you, Tristel? Any any plans? Any actions? Um, 
I guess is if uh, like if I notice Pearl kind of inching toward this cave to kind of just like follow at like a, a short distance behind her um, to, mm -hmm. to protect her, kind of help out if anything comes up. Okay. Well, Kira, Kyra, sorry. Um, you can take a look at these tracks. And they all, all just like the other ones. They're all <laughs> troglodyte tracks. All right. Um. So I don't want to kill this creature. I don't think it's. Um. I think it was displaced and did not have any malice intent while attacking the town. Uh. So I either want to leave it alone or try and talk to it. I think I want to try and talk to it. Hmm. Okay. What do you two think? I will come back and whisper a uh, conversation. What do you think these creatures eat? Fish? Because <laughs> if they're really hungry and just looking for food, I don't know, maybe we can help it out by giving it some food and maybe... Hmm. Yeah. Although maybe that's not going to work. We just killed your four friends, but here's some food. Yes, it's really is good it, food. This fish is like top notch. Is it humanoid enough for me to uh, try charming it? Definitely, it would be. It would definitely fall under the charmable area. Well, maybe I can um, try getting it into a state where it will want to talk to us. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Does anything ill happen if that cast fails, or does just nothing happen? Nothing happens. Okay. Then yeah, we'll know that it was charmed by me after, though. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, you I'm killed still my have... friends and. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking at my fire bolts ready, um, just in case something bad happens. And stay at a distance. I'll be in front. Okay. But... Within five feet of you two? I can charm it within. Yes, protect us. Okay. Well, you're gonna go up and you're gonna cast Charm Person on the creature while it's asleep. Is that, is that right? Yes. Okay, you gotta be within 30 feet to do it and that is well within 30 feet. You can see the creature right there. So um, I guess it makes a saving throw to avoid the effects. Is it a, a wisdom save? Yes. Okay. Uh, and it will definitely fail the saving throw. But it's still asleep. Charmed. So someone's got to wake it up. Uh, Why don't you two do it? Do I suppose I'll be the one. I'm just the one that charmed it. Let's uh, wake it up. Pearl, will you stand at the ready in case anything goes foul? <laughs> yep. <laughs> ready. Alright. Uh, hello? The creature, like, opens one yellow eye and it locks on you and it, its head cocks up a little bit as it, like, rouses itself and squints against the bright light of daylight and it lets out a... <sighs> Hello, my dear. Yes, I understand. So sorry to wake you at this hour. Rub some sleep out of its lizard-like or chameleon-like eyes. Um, what conversation do I make with this creature? <laughs> Beaks, basic or whatever. Common. Common. Does it seem to understand? It gets to its feet. Seems to be angry and not understanding I you. I don't think it can talk to me. <laughs> I kind of like whisper loudly over my okay. I, I, like I, a stage I whisper. It uh takes a step closer to you. <laughs> Back away. This seems scary. Okay, Tristal, Lonely. back off a little bit and and just see what it Lonely does. Back away. 
All right, all right, we'll, we'll give you some space. A little closer, and then it sees the warrior with the sword drawn, and it like all of a sudden like its legs bend, it gets into a fighting position. You can see that the bright light of daylight is like hurting its eyes, and it's having a hard time looking around. But it squares directly towards Kyra and hisses again. <laughs> Um, I have my position myself. Like, no, this is my friend. This friend. Uh, the creature just sort of bristles. You can see these spines on its back begin to like rise fully as it steps out and like closer to the canyon wall or the cave wall. Hmm. Anyone have food? We were talking about feeding it. Can we offer it something? I don't know. It seems very, very angry. I I don't know if well, it's a good I, idea I, to I, let this one go. I Is can it? give it... I don't think we're going to be getting much information it's, from it. Run away. I don't want Do it to want get to... friends. I think that's a bad idea. <laughs> I don't think we should kill this thing. I think we should just let it run away. But what if it gets more friends? What if it attacks the village? I think we've intimidated this thing enough already. I don't think it's going to come back. Okay. We killed all of its friends. It got intimidated, ran away. Um, yeah, I think we've dealt with this creature. Okay, let's see where it runs. Uh, I think we at should. At the very least. Hmm. We could follow it. Yes. If it is going to find friends, maybe we could see where they come from. Mm -hmm. How about we slowly follow it? See if it wants us to follow it, maybe. But I'm doubtful of that. I'm also just doubtful of this. Slowly, non-threateningly, step forwards. Very slowly, so it can like run away if it wants to. Okay. So yeah. Sounds good. We'll do that. Does, yeah, it seems um, fine when Tristel walked towards it a couple of steps, but then as soon as Kyra started following it, uh, it backs up a little bit, and then Pearl steps out from behind the tree, and the creature notices Pearl for the first time, and its bristles like go full fledged. It gets really low in like a defensive posture, and lets out another. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend I'm scared and back off, mm. and then Ooh. start moving around. Uh, in, Give in that me direction. a deception check. Um, you are trying to portray something with body <laughs> language that is not necessarily true. It gets its insight check to uh, counter, but it is in daylight, which means its eyes aren't that great. So I'm going to give it disadvantage on its um, insight check because it's hard to make out your features. So it sees you back up and it seems to relax a little as you flee the area. Okay. I think I would like to keep like moving around in this direction so that if it starts running north, I can tell the direction mm -hmm. it's gonna run in. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, once I you leave, I'll... the creature's gonna come a little bit closer. A little bit closer. Tristel, do you want me to back away or not? just a little bit okay hello <laughs> hi <laughs> it's like coming closer to me mm -hmm. uh, it's coming closer to you but it's uh, vision is past you it's looking at the warrior behind you and then with one quick motion it like darts in front of you or behind you and like puts its arm as if like to shield you against the the person with the sword Oh no, you don't you don't need to uh okay. And then using like the backwards pressure of its arm, it tries to like get you to walk with it away from these other people. <laughs> as if Fair it's like enough. protecting you from a monster. <laughs> Guys, maybe you should follow. Um They can't understand me, so <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Can we Follow, trying to be out of sight. I imagine uh, we so should. So my theory is that it might try to take her to friends, because <laughs> then we could figure out if it has friends. If it does indeed take her somewhere. Well, 
at this point, it will take you by the hand, Tristel, and turn the other way and try to, like, lead you away from these terrible monsters that are threatening the two of you. Okay, I'm gonna try to just sneakily keep following, hiding behind the trees along the way, and trying not to make mm-hmm. noise and keep my distance. Tristel, do you, do you allow yourself to be led away by the monster? Um... Do I see my friends trying to follow behind me? <laughs> well, are you guys you guys are trying to be out of sight, right? Yeah, so I in mean, theory, I'm definitely trying, trying to be sneaky. Yeah, so uh, why don't you two give me new stealth rolls and Tristel give me a perception check and I'll have the monster make a perception check as well. And we'll see who notices what. It's a great stealth check, Freya. You'll never be seen. <laughs> The warrior, however, in the chain mail (laughs) with the shield and the sword is just like clang, clang, (laughs) clang, clang. And uh, everyone sees the warrior or hears the warrior more likely. In fact, I think you even get disadvantage on your stealth checks because you're wearing heavy armor. Is that right? Isn't it medium? I'm I'm wearing medium armor, I think. What are you wearing? Scale mail. Scale mail? Scale, okay. Then I think you might be fine. Scale mail does have disadvantage on stealth checks still. Oh. Okay. Tables aren't numbered. Page 148 of the player's handbook. So you, it's hard to roll lower than a six, but would you try anyway? Mm-hmm. Maybe it's like a three. Be beautiful. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, still loudly clanging around. The creature tries to take Tristel, and then as it realizes the warrior is coming, it like breaks into a bit of a jog, squinting in the bright daylight, trying to pull you to safety, trying to protect you from the horrible, horrible oh monster who just killed all of its friends last night. <laughs> How long does charm last? Actually, I probably don't know that, so I don't know. Yeah, well, that's a great question. See, because the creature will will take you um, up along this river. Oh my gosh. Which I'm going to bring you to. And it's while you guys are sort of like coming along the river's edge. Um, let me bring you all onto this map. And then... Oh no, you're already here. Cool. Uh, it's while you're heading in this direction like this, you know, the creature's made a little bit of progress on you all uh, that the charm spell wears off you know after an hour or so and you can tell that it's worn off because the creature immediately stops in its tracks and like looks over at its shoulder at you and its eyes go from like concerned to confused to angry (laughs) and i think you can tell what is happening as this is going on tristel so why don't you and the monster roll initiative against each other Oh, I don't have music right now, by the way. I don't know if I should. Uh, yeah, no, no, it just ran out. Okay. Let's start it again. Uh, here. So you will go first. Uh, you can tell that the spell is wearing off as it's looking at you and its eyes are like doing that thing where they register the situation it's in. Uh, did, what would you like to do? I, I was mm-hmm. thinking, does my thing go off? Because I was readying the firebolts but maybe I, that was not like while following yeah right yeah it's like been a whole hour of chasing yeah, yeah. so i think the ready to action gets dropped okay um tristel you can act first mm-hmm. as you realize the spell's wearing off well shit first <laughs> second um I, I don't want to be scratched by one of these again um i would like to kind of like back like back away from it um Mm -hmm. (laughs) would that be a disengage pretty pretty close to me i don't think it's able to attack yet or like would attack if you start backing away immediately yeah i mean you take a, a step back and it doesn't react immediately is this the the end of your turn um I'd like to cast a minor illusion cantrip and just make a loud, loud noise to try and scare it. Great. What noise are you making? Um, like a shrieking, like screech, just like something feral. Oh, excellent. 
All right. Uh, a, where does the sound appear from? You can make it originate anywhere within 30 feet of you. Let's do kind of like from from like the shrubbery over here to maybe scare it. Uh, I didn't see which shrubbery you were talking about. Oh. Like the ones nearby? Yes. Okay, perfect. So the creature will hear the shriek, uh, whirl to face the bush for a moment on its turn, and then make a check one more of these here morale checks which it will fail it's not going to fight you this day and it will immediately uh, break into a full run away from you in this direction and at this point the rest of the party can roll into initiative because you weren't privy to the exchanging of looks um, but what are you going to do uh -oh. I guess before initiative is fully rolled are you going to let it run or are you going to chase it down are you going to kill it what's the I plan I plan on letting it run okay um, I really want to see where it's going. Uh, so I think I'm going to yeah. pursue it. Um, follow it. Yeah, follow it, but probably not like outright attack it as soon as I can. Although it is like twice as fast as us, so I don't know if we can catch up with it. Uh, it's got the same movement speed. It's got 30 speed. Oh, okay. Well, in that case. Yeah, it's just been moving and dashing and moving and dashing. Oh, sorry. I moved my token. I actually don't know how far I can move. Uh, well, we can just kind of... The initiative order looks pretty good. Pearl is definitely going to be at the top of it. So you can run after this thing as it begins to run away. And let's determine how this is going to be resolved. Uh, we're going to do a chase. So the creature is going to make a strength check just to try and outrun you or a, an athletics check to try and outrun you. And you guys can all make athletics checks to try and follow. If you win your athletics check, then you catch up to it eventually. If you if the creature wins, it will outdistance all of you. So everyone make an athletic check. <laughs> wow. You like oh my brain your ankle somehow. <laughs> uh, and it will roll 1d20 plus two, which is not very good. So after a little bit of running, yeah, the creature makes a head uh, Tristel and Pearl have been left far in the dust, but our fighter will catch up to the creature as it just like exhausted has to stop to catch its breath and it like turns to face you as you're approaching it. The rest of your party completely distance behind. I will now stop uh, 45 to 60 feet away and I will not be in a threatening pose. I will just like stop and do nothing. Great. Well, it starts walking towards you. Oh. Um, towards you. I will ready an attack. Action. Ready an attack. If it gets really close to me with intent to strike me, then I will ready the attack. Well, uh, then it's coming to fight you. So make your attack as it okay. walks all the way up to you. Ah, oh, jeez. I did not initiative? want to do this. Um. Excuse me? Do we roll another initiative? Or, I don't you guys know. got left in the dust. You know, oh, you okay. you guys so got all got outpaced <laughs> as it ran away. Uh, 19 is a hit <laughs> for five points of damage. You run the creature whoops, through oh. the belly with the, your sword, but it still descends upon you with tooth and claw. Two swipes with its claws. Does a 16 hit? No. Nope. And then a bite, which is a hit. It'll sink its teeth into you for five points of damage. And the two of you... Uh, well, I guess it went, so now it's your turn. Kyra. Okay. Um... You know, if you don't kill it in one blow, it could take you down. It gets three attacks. Yeah. Um... And your friends are so far away. Yeah. Oh, jeez. So far away. Can you, you lost do them a few healing thingy? Or... Do I want to do that? Like as a bonus action? Um, um. Let's see. A second wind. Is... It's on your turn. You can use a bonus action. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can I do my bonus action after I attack? Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to attack... And if I do not kill it, then I'm going to use the bonus action. 
Right. You lash out with your sword, another easy hit on the creature, and it lays dead at your feet. I'm so sad that I killed this thing. I did not want to kill it. Yeah. A few minutes later, Pearl, well, Tristel will arrive, and then a few minutes after that, Pearl will come <laughs> limping along with a delicately sprained ankle. I'm really sorry I'm late. It's I, I just don't do long distance. I can do short distance sprints, but this is not what I'm good at. Oh. Um, so here it lays dead, seven hours out from town, which means if you head back right now, you'll make it home just after nightfall. I don't think we can stay out here any longer. Um, I would like to, but we don't have any camping gear. We're not prepared to go on a long expedition. Um, we did what we set out to do. Yeah. We do have some sense of kind of where it would be headed toward as well. Yeah, so we can remember that if we want to come out here again with more equipment. Can I climb up? on a nearby cliff and just like look ahead and try to see like the surroundings. Like can I can I see like a big cave or a gathering of these creatures somewhere? Or... Yes, yeah, so this river just kind of winds through the forest uh, in in the direction of a mountain that's you can see from your canyon. Um, but there's no signs of civilization anywhere nearby. There's no obvious caves or marks. Wherever this creature was taking you was probably still quite a ways away from this spot. It's just as where the charm spell happened to wear off. Um, but, you know, we're seven hours out from town right now. We are a good distance away from home. I'm worried about home being attacked. I want to be ready. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know I for how much longer we can stay out if we don't have a camping gear. I think I would have brought mine, but I'm not sure if... Um... If y'all didn't I I have any or er, entertainers pack, or I guess we just have like bedrolls, nothing, no like tents or anything. But we're far away from the mountain, right? Yeah, the mountain is still many miles away. Hmm. And isn't there the dangerous forest uh, between us and the mountain? Well, that is the woods that you are within presently. You're like oh, the. Okay closer side, but this is a dangerous section of woods. Some of the foresters and hunters come here to gather food, mm. but you're like, you know, you're pretty, you're deep enough into the woods right now that this area is mostly unfamiliar to you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, do we I have a bedroll, too. Oh. And some rations. Do oh. we see anything on the body on this one? Like, is there anything unique about this one? Is it holding any, I don't know, symbols or... No, it doesn't. Interest. Nothing. Like the other ones had some scraps of clothes on them. This one doesn't have any clothes. It's just the, uh, you know, amphibian hide. No weapons. No belts. It was no sleeping. Flags. I feel sad. I think I'm just gonna like play a sad song, in my lyre, over it. We bonded a little in our short time. <laughs> <laughs> you did, didn't you? Hmm. Very sad. Okay. Uh, so I guess we should head back to town then. If mm -hmm. we're not ready to yeah. like move on further along the river. Yeah. We have a direction at least now. Um... Great. Um, so you guys can make your way back home. It's going to be a long walk home. You're essentially going to be hiking for 14 hours this day. So I'm going to need everyone to make me a constitution saving throw to see if you can make it home without suffering any exhaustion. Ooh, Autumn's going to take a point of exhaustion. Yeah. So we're going to set that up on your character sheet now. Um, it hasn't been done yet. Great. Encumbrance. Show. Where's the show exhaustion option? Ah, here we go. 
Um, so you will have one level of exhaustion, which is just disadvantage on ability checks. Um, once you rest for one night, it'll go away. So it's not actually going to be a big deal unless you get back home in the middle of a fight, which is not the situation when you arrive back. However, Ooh, I'm like, is it? The, the town is gathered to see what is going on. Um, everyone wants to know the, the results of this thing. People have been staying up all day and it gets late into the evening. No one's seen from you. Night begins to come. You know, uh, evening is coming. And finally, you guys manage to march your way back into town. You can hear like a small cry of joy upticked by the citizens as you all arrive. And they want to hear about your adventure, your journey. What's going on? What did you guys see? What did you do? Yeah, so um, we found the one remaining troglodyte that ran away. I was sleeping. We wanted to talk to it to see if we could figure out what's going on. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem to speak common. Um, we tried to like befriend it, but that ended in tragedy when it attacked us and I was forced to kill it. And so the troglodytes are no more. I personally like, I wanted to, um, so this is out of character. Uh, I wanted to like let the troglodyte live, but uh, internally I'm a little glad that I'm able to reassure the townspeople that the threat is no more. Well, if the threat is no more, then the barkeep... I believe her name is Selena, will throw you guys a, a very small party. You know, nothing big, Thank nothing you. fancy, but there's some extra fries from earlier in the day. Nice. Uh, and there's some beer on tap that she'll pour out for you guys and let you tell your story at the, the Riverside Tavern, um, way down on the east side of town. And you guys can chat about your adventures, tell people what you saw, how far you came from town, uh, and all of that jazz. Yeah, we'll be sure to, like, tell the hunters and explorers, like, the terrain that we explored, so uh, they're able to map out the area more. Great, great. I and all well. Good Go song to sing about my would-be tro troglodyte lover. <laughs> <laughs> tell us the theme of the song. Like, um, you said would-be troglodyte lover. What's going on in this tale? How does it go? In this tale, it was... He, well, oh, I don't know. Something about him waking up in a cave and 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 may, maybe still half in a dream, thinking thinking I was, you know, a fellow amphibian woman, and then pulled the veil from his eyes. And no, we could not be. It's it's a very sad tale. Everyone hearing it, you know, oh. it, it, despite him being a monster, kind of like wipes away tears. Surely. Uh. Very sad. Give me a performance check as you uh, <laughs> sing your, your song of the troglodyte. How it could have had company and friendship, but woke to a nightmare instead of a dream. <laughs> That's an amazing tale. This is one to write down in the books. What <laughs> nice. name did you give the monster, if any? Or was it left unnamed? Um, Trog Lover. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's a Trogger's name. That's Troggers. definitely Trogger's, yeah. Super Trogger's. Great. All right. Why don't we end our, our, this segment right here on this sad tale of Trogger, the, the Trog Lover. And when we come back, we will, um, uh, Make some dice rolls and see what this week in town is like. Because troglodytes are gone. Time to okay. enter into normal town mode. But we'll do that on the other side of our break. All right. Thanks so much for joining. We'll be back shortly. Um, bye. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Embers of the Wilds. 
um, our party can kind of return to peaceful life in the town. Things will just keep going as they normally do. But we're going to roll on our weekly encounter table. So who wants to be the first one to decide the fate of the party? I want to. That's the volunteer Amazing. I'm looking for. Yeet. Roll me 2d6. And 2D6. we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what happens this Bam. week. Ooh. Nice I roll. roll. I don't know if that's yeah, a good roll. You know, well, that is the quiet roll. Um, oh. Nothing much happens this week. The rest of the week sort of passes by. No monsters show up. Visitors. There's no dramatic weather events. You know, life just continues hap happily and peacefully here in your cozy little canyon town. Uh, what do the townspeople think in general about everything that happened? Yeah, so the people are, at first were scared and concerned, but then when you guys chased down the last remaining one and it couldn't go back and tell anyone anything, and then like a week passes without anything happening, the town quickly moves on and chalks it up to just another, you know, weird thing that's happened. Life just kind of, you know, we're in this canyon town. Monsters sometimes appear, usually not, and these just happen to be some random monsters that came and vanished. Uh, Though within my three-person sheriff circle, I still have the fear that these may have been displaced by something, and so still on a little bit of high alert. Slightly okay. above average alert. <laughs> yeah. Um, with a full week of peaceful rest, you guys can get all your hit points and all your spell slots back. Everything goes back to fully rested. Amazing. Um, I just want to do like a little bit of RP and check in with each of your characters about what's been going on and get your own individual thoughts. And let's start with Tristel. Uh, what uh, are your own... can, you, yes? can you update my health? Because there's a cat and I can't do anything right now. Ah, uh, oh, yes. He's going away. Okay. We're good. Uh, Tristel, what do you think about the happenings this week? Or last week? I, f I feel like my character, like, so So it's like I'm, I'm drawn to this kind of cozy canyon because it's maybe a little less lively than all the stuff I have typically, you know, been out in the world exploring, seeing. And, and like, that's what I liked about this. And so I feel like I'm definitely a little ruffled, like, oh, no, like, I was just getting used to kind of things being calmer. Um, and, and, you know, now that's kind of being uh, threatened. Um, so I think I, I've definitely grown to like the the easygoing kind of nature of, of the town. Um, and yeah, don't don't necessarily like anything messing with that. Yeah, that makes sense. What about you, uh, Pearl? What are your feelings about this this incident followed by a week of rest? Um, I think I would generally be kind of scared um, because this happened like right outside my house. Um, so I think for the like ever since this happened, I think every time I go to my house, I think I pull off the ladder <laughs> so that it's harder for things to climb up um, to just stay a bit more safe. Um, mm -hmm. And being that close, I think I like, I think I like look down the river uh, every night and like try to make sure that there's nothing more coming from there. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm generally kind of, kind of scared being so close to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Kyra? Um, I'm concerned, but I'm not worried. Uh, I think I have everything under control. I have some theories as to what could happen. I'm taking precautions. Um, I think I have everything under control. But it's definitely a rare event that is something that I'm thinking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's just on the mind, but not too concerned? Yeah. All right. And also, what's a what's an ordinary week in the life of for you guys? In the same order, starting with Tristel. What's, what's your, an ordinary week for you here in town? What are you doing? I like to mosey around maybe go like is, is is there like a market kind of area get some snacks 
Yeah, a lot of people sell stuff on the out of their front doors, basically. So you can like walk through the boardwalks, and these people grow turnips, and these people grow potatoes, and then like cook and spice the potatoes and sell them. So, you know, everyone's got like a little bit of market going on, but it's on like an individual basis. Yeah, so like kind of like mosey around, chat with the vendors. Like I'm definitely a very like friendly, social person. Like people, people kind of know who I am because I'm this you know ostentatious bard. Um, so yeah, just kind of like moseying around, but definitely the, like, I, I guess I'm curious about what the vibe of the townspeople are, like if they're nervous too. Um, yeah, you know, 20 years ago, there's big war happened and it like washed everywhere except for the town. The town happened to quietly avoid it. The biggest events in town have been like a couple of fires in the mines. And the last one of those was like 10 years ago. So if the monsters are gone, the people are just, it's peaceful here, it's chill, no danger ever comes. But I'm going to need you to make me a charisma check. Not a, a charisma saving throw, just a regular check. So you can click on the charisma text of your character sheet, right above the four. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, perfect. So this week, you're buying some uh, something from one of the local townsfolk. Maybe it's a like a, some deeply fried potatoes. And one of the vendors comes up to you as you're buying these fried potatoes from him and he looks deep into your eyes and he says, Tristel, I know we've only known each other a short while, but there's a dance next week down at the tavern. Would, would you be my partner to the dance? Would you go with me? Uh, a, a dance? Yes. Um... <laughs> A dance. Let's put a pin in that, shall we? <laughs> but it's next week. I, and I I don't want to go stag. And you are uh, just the most... I mean, if, if, if you would... The honor you would do my honor would flatter me if you would take me. <laughs> or let me take you. Or go together. Oh, oh we, we we mustn't rush so quickly into these sort of things. You 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 see me here every day. I walk I walk in front of front of your of course. shop. No, Let, I, let's I, let's I take a let's take a night to think about it. I didn't mean to. You know, I just I'm I I got another customer. I'm so sorry. And he quickly like darts Amazing. away to uh, hide his face. Do I have my potatoes though? <laughs> your potatoes okay so I'll just charge like, you for them in his panic amazing um, so i'm just gonna snack on those and mosey along <laughs> excellent uh pearl mm -hmm. what does a week in the life look like for you um i think the regular day-to-day -day for me is probably helping out hunting like for food outside of town uh just catching whatever people eat here in terms of meat um great yeah i think that's what i would do in general yeah Why i think maybe make a nature check and we'll see how this week of hunting goes because yeah. not every day you get to bring home a stag sometimes it's squirrel soup for the whole town well <laughs> <sighs> squirrel soup yep I love squirrel some soup. days you bring home big animals sometimes you bring home not at all i think the nervousness like... just got to me after everything that's happened Mm -hmm. huh. I think I would right. like I know that we saw that one of them had been attacked already so I think mm -hmm. I'm gonna I think I'm, I want to like try and ask around people who might know more about like surrounding and camps or cities or like do we know anything about any people living nearby or any settlements or if we've heard Definitely about something not. like that no, oh, um, about 20 years ago, there was a great war, and the closest settlements were on the east side of the canyon, and they all got wiped out during the first year of the, during one of the years of the war, and were never replaced. Um, to your knowledge, there have never been any settlements up the west end of the cavern. That kind of just goes to a, a higher plateau with some forest and a, a mountain, and that area has always been sort of wild and undiscovered. Uh, so the only towns you're aware of would be east, and all the ones you really know about are destroyed, except for the ones that Tristel has come from, which is, you know, a little further east and uh, a little bit south along the coastline. Okay, so, so, so nothing nearby. 
or any anything no. that would come to mind for someone who might know the history as for who it could be that might have attacked this uh, creature before definitely not okay there is no concept of anything that's really out that way that's just sort of the one of the undiscovered wilds that isn't really it's dangerous we just don't bother yeah hmm. Uh, and what about you, Kyra? What is a week in the life like for you? So me and my um, deputies alternate patrols. Um, mm -hmm. Just wandering around the city, sometimes just like sitting on a balcony for a couple hours. Um, another aspect is talking to townsfolk, see if there's any quarrels anyone is having, um, ask about how they're doing, make sure everything in the town is running smoothly. So I do chat with a couple people. I was going to ask people about that, but I guess uh, Pearl already did. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, if any well, scuffles break out, then yeah. The Smith. Horst. Yes. Horst? Horst. Horst. Yes. The Smith Horst is doing his usual grumblings. You see, Horst and uh, the Smith and... Do, uh, Selena, the bartender, are the two wealthiest people in town. Um, you know, they they make the most amount of money out of everyone. However, <sighs> Selena is the barkeep is in the services tax bracket, and Horst is in the craftsman tax bracket. And even though Selena is you know making way more money than anyone else, except for Horst in the the in the craftsman tax bracket, she's only getting charged services taxes and horse has kind of been on the case for a while about this. You know, it's she's making so much money. She makes like 900 gold a year. And yet she's only having to pay the, the service member. Like that's a 15% tax. That's not that big of a deal. It's just, it's unfair and we should be having equitable taxes for everyone. And no one really gives a shit about, you know, these two people's personal squabbles over who pays which taxes. Um, but that's sort of the, the grumblings going on today. Horst is once again muttering to himself about the unfair practices. You know, someone should run against Mayor Barnaby next time. What about you, Sheriff? What, why don't you put down the sword and, and take up the quill? Change these tax laws. Put us on even standing. Oh, that's not my place. It is not my place to write laws. I... Um... I enforce laws. Um, I don't think I am have the right skill set. I care about this town and everyone in it too much. And... But don't you care enough to get appropriate legislation in place so that everything can be fair? I mean, look, if Selena makes 900 gold a year ballpark, right, and the next highest paid craftsman after myself only makes 450 gold a year, doesn't it make sense that Selena should at least have to pay those tax bracket levels? Um, I mean, I'm I will, for a progressive tax. I just think that she should be in the progressive tax bracket. <laughs> I will. I will try and emphasize and say, like, yes, that's a that's a very good point. Um, that's a great I thing hear. to discuss at the next town meeting. Um, wow, well, I, 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 <laughs> I mean, nothing ever really gets decided in meetings, right? It's just. Well, I don't mean to bother you. I know you're busy. It's just I feel like there should be some more fairness to this town. Um, yes. Goodness, the I, top one percent squabbling about wanting to lower taxes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, why don't we have somebody else roll for the next week in town? Uh, let's see. Last time it was Pearl, so Tristel, you why don't you go now? Give me two d six, and we'll see what a day, what another week we get. Ten. Another tent, another peaceful, joyous week <laughs> with no problems anywhere. God, you guys are going to miss these weeks. Um, you know, you can rest, you can relax. The the <laughs> issue of taxes kind of dips away a little bit. The dance comes up. Um, mm. Do you all attend public festivities and dances? I act as a guard for the dance. I'm the... Um chaperone shoot what's it called bouncer what's the <laughs> bouncer that's the word i'm the bouncer for the dance nice up, bro? do people I get very like drunk during dance. this and what were we gonna say tristel 
Oh, I definitely attend the dance. I feel like I, I probably don't have like a date to the dance. Like I probably just use this as like a way to get like goods from people mm -hmm. <laughs> asking me to the dance. Yeah, well, um, there's a couple of local musicians, not that talented. Uh, you know, they're primarily like miners or herdsmen or something who play music on the side for fun. So it's great, but it's more of like, you know, locals around the bonfire rather than talented and trained professional like yourself. Um, but it's upbeat music. There are flowers thrown in the air. There's food and drinks being served, and everyone seems to be having a, a splendid time. Pearl, do you have anyone to take to the dance? No, I don't think I do. Uh, I don't think anyone do would you, want to. Um, do you even go? You know, I think the, um, the times when people are drunk... I think that's a bit of a double-edged sword type of situation of like, you know how people's true colors sometimes sort of come out when people are drunk. Um, so for mm -hmm. me, that's an opportunity to A, gauge what people think of me to like see if they think I'm like a threat or something. Uh, and B, um, if people have an easier time talking to me when they're drunk, maybe it's easier for me to just like see if I can get to know some people. It's probably easier that way than uh, when they're sober. So yeah. I think I, I think okay. I would like I don't think I would like attend the dance or anything, but I would probably be nearby, like sort of outside, like sitting on a rock and just observing what yeah. everybody's up to. So the dance takes place on the main bridge of town. We haven't really gotten into naming bridges and talking about town mechanics, and we don't need to right now. But this right here um, that I brought you to and where the cleric is is the main bridge. It's extra wide, and this is where a lot of activities will take place. So. Um, the people who are dancing will be on the bridge. The musicians will be on the cleric, the, the temple side of the bridge. And then anyone who's watching can be like down on one of the lower levels or down on one of these back levels, socializing, hanging out, whatnot. Uh, and that's going to be our sort of setup for the dance here. Kyra, you said you're you're just you're a professional here. You're just watching. Sure. Yep. I might say hi to hi to Pearl, who's hiding outside and whatnot, but just okay. there to keep things in check. Great. Um, Justelle, are you content to just to hang out and dance? Do you want to show off your musician skills, or do you want to be more of a, a tender rather than a worker? I think I may try out the new Trog Lover song just on some more ears. Okay. That's like a new hit of mine, so people want to keep hearing it. Yeah. One of the, the slow dances. Yeah. Here. Excellent. All right. Give me another performance check now that you've had some time to work on it. Are the improvements good or is it too complicated now? Maybe it took a turn for the weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I feel like it's it's good. Definitely like a good slow dance vibe. Oh, so tragic. These. Yeah. Give me another performance check, and we'll find out how it's received by the people. Mm -hmm. Well, unsurprisingly, <laughs> when it's a party and a dance, the, the tale of the weird amphibian <laughs> who falls in love with a human kind of makes, you know, it's not, it's sort of romantic, but it's also a little like, wait, am I the amphibian in this situation? Are you the amphibian? And the people, like, they'll dance to it, but they're kind of like... <laughs> It's a little slimy. It's a little... I don't want to... I'm not quite ready to, like, picture myself dancing with an amphibian or being an amphibian. Um, Fair enough. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't have music, by the way. Uh... You don't have music? No. But there's cheerful, happy music playing. No, oh, no. I just refreshed and okay, still no music. Restart it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Have... Yep. There we got go. It. Excellent. Right. Um... So that sounds like what this uh, second week in town is like. Just happy, peaceful. There's a dance. The hunting's not great. We're in March. Life is going well. Kyra, why don't you roll us another 2d6? Here we go. Oh, jeez. That looks low. What a perk. 
So it is the night after the dance. It mm-hmm. is Sunday, the 8th of March. Uh, not the night of the dance, right? The dance happens full day, then the next night. Yeah. COVID um, hits in March. <laughs> Uh, let's see you are not on watch today your guardsmen are we need to roll some dice um, would you also roll me a Ooh, a d3 please <laughs> Good news. Okay. This is ominous music. I just I have concerns. Oh, I mean, we just had lots of happy music for a while. We got to mix it up from time to time. Don't want to. <laughs> um... Nothing meant by the music. It's fine. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's unimportant. Okay. Um, everyone is happily asleep except for the guards on duty. And you will all be awoken to the sound of town bells, church bells ringing in the town, uh, rising everyone to wakefulness. Now, your bells here have a certain pattern. There's a a certain ring that you do for there's danger. There's like a certain ring that you do for like celebrations. There's a certain ring you do for weddings, right? The the patterning of the bells can inform the people of what what the symbol of the bells means. And when you're awoken, it is the, there is something dangerous happening in the town sound. Uh, And everyone in the town can easily wake up to this, except for maybe... Pearl, who lives really far from the town bells. So, Pearl, I'm going to need you to actually make me a perception check. It's only a DC 10 to be woken up by the bells in it's the night. Funny. I got this. You could do 10. That's so easy. Sorry, what was so it? E- perception, DC 10. Okay. You know, okay. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I set these low because I expect you to pass. <laughs> it's, um, it's fine. It's fine. Sheriff and Tristel and other members of the town are awoken to the ringing of the bells. I will Something dangerous. Get out there. Okay. You can quickly come on out. Tristel, what do you do when you hear the bells? You're deep on the east side of town. Is this a concern of yours, or are you just a happy citizen who doesn't have to worry about anything? I think that I'll definitely come out um, kind of, like, still on edge, like, in the back of my mind about what's happened recently, so it would pique my Mm -hmm. curiosity. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, You can come out. You can see the innkeepers are up and awake as well. Greta and Eva are chatting. Um, too old to really get involved and do anything at this point, but you know, curious as to what's going on, they ask you if you hear anything to come back and tell them. And out in the middle of town, you will see that the guardsmen are there. One of them, actually, has, has come towards you, uh, Kira. After ringing the bells in the church, they run into you and tell you that three more of those troglodyte-looking guys were here in town. They were sniffing about. They had crawled up one of the staircases and were poking around in some buildings. When the guards came, troglodytes like scampered down the cliffs, like hopped over a railing, slid down the cliffside, and ran back up the river. And the guards went to go ring the bells to alert the town that these things are back um, because they got scurred. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... I assume that we, all three of us, want to head west to see if they're out of town. Um, as a group of us go, go check things out. Okay. So you grab Tristel and yourself 
uh, and head west out of town, where yeah, you three will. Between, um, the two other deputies, but uh, I assume the two other deputies. Okay. Yeah. Well, but if Trishel wants to come with, then she's welcome to come with. Yes, I would like to come. Excellent. You'll grab your two deputies. You'll grab the other combat character in town, and you guys can head west. Um, you'll find Pearl's house is suspiciously dark and unoccupied at this point in time. Um, yeah, I guess if it's suspicious, then yeah, let's check out how she's doing. You will find her front door has scratch marks all over it that are not hers. Ooh. So the door is shut. Definitely immediately connect the dots of we found the original troglodytes uh, checking out Pearl's place before, and now this is real, like, um, causation instead of coincidence, or whatever that mm -hmm. is. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I will open up the door, see if she's okay, um, or at least pound on the door. Um, yeah. Because I assume it's locked. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I... That will wake her then. Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna sleepily, slowly wake up and waddle over to the door and just open it very carefully. Um, I believe it's my of relief as I see that you're safe. Uh, Kyra, what, what's... Oh, last night? That wasn't me. I was out hunting. There's, like, if something happened, like, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. I, I just, it was... <laughs> oh. I was just hunting. It, did nothing, I? Did nothing anything happen? Happened. You're you're okay. It's um, fine. Okay. What's um, what brings you here? I point, at, I point at the door and say there were three more troglodytes in town. Oh, more of them. I thought we got rid of all of them. Yeah, I, I did too. What? What happened to my door? <laughs> I don't know. It seems like they were trying to get in or something? I'm not sure why they're interested in you. Do you have any idea why they're interested in you? I have no idea. I don't think I have anything of value that they might want. I don't know. Hmm. Um, yeah, I guess, um, looking west to make sure that they're still, um, like, continuing on our journey west to make sure that they're out of town. You'd like to go? Um, sure. Yeah, like, looking around, trying to see anything. Yeah. All right, well, uh, are all three of you, <laughs> five of you, I said, I suppose, going? Perfect. Okay. You guys can begin to head out of town. Oh, um, one, at least one deputy should stay behind. Um, to guard the town if we're actually like going fully out of town. Right, so your two deputies, which I don't think have names quite yet. You can name yeah. them whenever you'd like. Yeah, um, I'm bad at names. You want to bring one with you and leave one here in town? Um, what do you two think? Uh, Pearl and Tristel. I guess it depends on if we're just scouting the vicinity or if we're going on a long journey. If we're going on a long journey, we should bring camping gear and properly make sure we're prepared yeah. for following the river. Maybe leaving someone behind yeah. to look after things. Yeah, if we're going on a proper trip, then definitely leave two people behind. Uh, can I look around my balcony to just see if anything else has happened? If, like, any of the flowers or any of the stuff has been, like, I don't know, turned upside down or tipped over? Or... Well, you got a couple of apple barrels over here, and you can see that one of them has recently been dipped into, and, uh, like, a, you know, 10, 15 apples have been swiped from it. Hmm. We'll see if... <laughs> hmm... Nothing really came of our, our last trip out of town. Um, so we we should have a different plan. Like, what should we do if we are going to go out of town? Do we have anything? I don't know. And unless we keep following the river and see if we find anything by the 
like closer to the mountain. Um, but then we'd need camping gear because then we'd be out for a yeah, long time. Yeah, yeah. We know the river is probably the source of where they're coming from, or at least we think that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So, gosh, option one is to leave now. Option two is to leave in the morning. Option three is to stay here. What time yeah. of day is it right now? It's nighttime. Night. Um. Oh, actually, what date is it right now? I haven't been keeping track. March 8th. The night of, or? Uh, the early morning of. Okay, right. like 1 a.m. or whatever. Or... Yeah, yeah. Um... Well, we probably shouldn't leave right now, uh, if we're sure that they're gone. Well, um, I, I don't really I know what they want. Have they attacked anyone else, or have they been the guards outside of? Shake their heads and go. We we didn't see them attack anyone. They were just poking around some buildings. Had gone up the stairs right next to the sheriff's station. They were looking at the, um, what do you call them? The, the thing where you put your head and your arms through. Huh. Where we keep the prisoners. You know, people yeah. that need punishment. Do they try to enter any other buildings? Not that I saw. Well, I mean, they were skulking about. We, we, Biggs, maybe we should uh, check the buildings for, for claw marks like this one? The yeah, other guy okay. nods. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, they said they will search the town for signs of the creature's happenings while you guys do your own thing. I'm thinking right. we, another option is that we wait for them to arrive back in town again and see what they do. Like, I don't know if we can set up a trap or something, um, but mm. yeah, I don't know what they would want with my house, <laughs> but we yeah. could just... We could ask the hunters if they have traps and we set them up. Hmm. Is there... So, in my house, is there any, like, connecting mines that have been boarded up? Or is it just this one? Your house is one of the few that wasn't built in a pre-existing mine. Or, more likely, uh, has filled the whole of the mine. Most of these houses have, like, b boarded something up somewhere. Um, but the records of like the various mine systems were all lost in that fire 10 years ago. And some of these houses are kind of old, so a lot of walls and homes might lead into other things. Any finished wall could have something behind it for most people, except for you. You're positive, your house is new, there's no further mines behind it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like a reasonable plan. Wait and see. Where did they Great. go? Did they all escape upriver? Do we know mm -hmm. what direction they left? The guards said they ran upriver. Okay. Then I say we set traps and wait for them to come back. Hmm. Clearly they do we want to set traps or do we want to just ambush them? Trap is probably a good idea, because if we ambush them, they're going to fight back, and we might not have any other choice but to kill them. I really want to know why mm. they're here. Yeah. If it's just that they're hungry, or if it's something else. Like, if they wanted something in my house, I guess I could leave the door unlocked and just not sleep there and see if they go in. Um, yeah, one thing is to not set any traps or ambush them, just watch them from the dark and see what they do. Not set any alarms, just watch. Yeah. Because I think if we ambush them and kill them, we're not going to know anything about why they're here, where they came from, or anything like that. Yeah. Agreed. So yeah, how about Pearl leaves her door open, doesn't sleep there, doesn't live there. Um, 
until they come back. Okay. The uh, danger caused by Pearl living, like, in someone else's place is uh, less dangerous than these creatures, so I am willing to make that um, trade. Alright, so you guys are going to all stay here at Pearl's house? Or are you guys going to, like, leave Pearl's house and, like, stand on another walkway? Where, where are your positionings? Um... To be honest, I'm a little iffy if they're actually going to come back tonight, but we can see. Um, you could also so just I go think, back to bed. I mean, you probably scared him off, right? Um, I think we should probably keep a heightened watch tonight, but then um, is reasonable watch for subsequent nights. Okay. Okay. I think I would want to... I think I would want to try and set up a small little place to sleep right on top of my house. So climb mm-hmm. up the wall, set up my bedroll, make sure that I can just stay there and just sleep for the night. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of just trying to be sneaky about it so that if someone arrives or something, I'll hear it. Um, but I can just kind of just observe from here. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, so everyone goes back to their, you know, heightened watch, but there's no immediate threat or anything. You all head yeah. back. And maybe an hour or two later, Pearl, you are awoken. I don't know if you ever really got properly to sleep when you hear the sound of things moving through the water. Um, and you will spot four creatures kind of coming up through the water, slinking together. Um, Three of them look like troglodytes. One of them looks like something completely different. It's got an axe and a shield. It looks far more lizard-like than Um, amphibian-like. It's got scales on its skin. It's sort of a a brass color. Um, And it wears a, a big cloak that kind of wraps all the way around it, hiding all of its features and anything it might be wearing under the cloak. It could be armored. It could have no armor. Um, but it certainly has an axe and a shield. Where is uh, Tristel and Kyra right now? Oh, they went home. I'm hiding behind the rock. Or Oh, okay. Right? Didn't you say you were going to heightened watch for the night, but sort of chill? Yeah, so... Were you going to chill behind the rock all night long? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? That's um, fine. I was going to be planning on like sleeping tomorrow uh, during the day because I feel like the um, threats always come at night. Mm-hmm. And so I was going to try and shift my sleep schedule. Great. Uh, what about you, Tristel? Did you call it early or did you stick around to hang out by a rock all night long in the cold? I think I probably went back home. Unfortunate for you. Well, Pearl, you see these things coming and Tris, uh, Kyra, if you're here as well, you'll probably be alerted to the sounds of sloshing as creatures move down river towards you all. Uh, I'm gonna be. I'm just gonna try to lay very flat and stay silent and try to observe what they're doing. I think I might just shuffle a little bit further away uh, and just mm-hmm. kind of try to hide there. Okay. Well, these three will keep pushing on down. Um, this time they seem to ignore your house and are coming this way. Um, I'm going to sneak around this rock and see if I can let them pass and then start following them. Oof, they botched their rolls. Yeah, they come to about here, um, to the, just the other side of the rock and look down into the town and you can see them like looking around at things, making notes. They're gauging very clearly the buildings and construction on this side of the town. Uh, And after about 10 minutes, they will return back to this other thing. There will be some like hissing and scratching sounds back and forth. And then the four of them will head back out up Canyon. Hmm. Oh, jeez. That seemed like a scouting party. Uh, that's not a great sign. 
Okay, I, I think at this point, if everything seems safe, I'm probably going to scurry down the cliffs where... Because mm -hmm. I probably knew that Kyra was staying there. Um, yeah, I'm just going to hop down to, to Kyra and I'll just... Did, did, you, did you see that? Did you see those creatures? Yeah, they looked like they were checking out the buildings on the other side of the canyon. So... so I have no idea why. There was a bigger one amongst them that had a cloak and looked like some sort of leader. It was not like the other lizard men. It stayed behind as the other three ran up to you. And then they just Clearly left. That. Clearly that one trusted the three to be able to accurately record whatever scouting that they're doing. So... That's a data point. I don't know what they're planning, but I don't like it. It seems like they, they are plotting something bigger than, than whatever has happened before. Yeah. Um, this, it's still in the middle of the night, right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. What do you but think we they should do? have left. Did the the big one look like a lizard as well? Or like sort of like the other ones? Yeah. Or was it... No, the other ones looked more like amphibians. This one looked more like a lizard. Mm. That is mm. weird. Definitely a different species, but not one that you recognize in any way. Okay, we should talk to the... You know, Kyra, we should talk to your dad. He seemed to know something about these types of creatures. Maybe we can ask them about that other creature. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Okay. Do you think he'd be okay waking him up at this hour, or...? Oh, uh, he has nothing better to do. Wake him up. <laughs> Old man can get some action. All right. Um... Yeah, maybe we should have your deputies make sure that nothing happens here. Um, just have them stay watch. Yeah, keep watch. Yeah. But yeah, um, I guess when we find them again, did they report any additional scratches on various houses? Anything out of the, out of the norm? Yes. Mm. Yes, they do. Um, there have been some scratches on some walls, on, uh, not walls, doors. It looks like, where's my map? Um... They had come up this very first uh, staircase here, right in front of the sheriff station and the lumber mill. And they had scratched around at the sheriff's door to try and get it open. One of them had scratched around at the lumber mill door to try and get it open. And that's when the guards had noticed them and they bolt and fled. Huh. I mean, if they're targeting the sheriff, that's some pretty knowledgeable actions what about the inn is the inn safe and the temple yeah the inn's on the far opposite end of town it's way down by the east side um so it's super far away and it's on the third floor third story so the inn totally safe i don't know if they have some sort of knowledge about us somehow if they're specifically targeting me and you, um, if we're like the few more capable fighters in this town, I don't know if they might know that or if they're just randomly searching for something else. Hmm. We should talk to your dad. He yeah. might know something more. All right, we trundle over. Uh, knock on the door, wake him up. Uh, yes? Uh, more troglodytes. They were... Uh, I heard the bells, but the, one of the deputies came by. Wedge, he, he said it was fine. They they left. I love these they names. Packed. <laughs> Thank you for these beautiful names. Sorry. Um... Is that sarcasm? <laughs> No, Star Wars is so good. I love it. Wait, is it Star Wars? Final Fantasy I thought it was the Final Fantasy so good. 7. It's all the Final oh, Fantasy games. What? Oh, it's Pretty all much. of them, yeah. yeah. Okay. Biggs and Wedge are... Biggs and Wedge? Yeah. 
Those first are two characters Star you Wars. Exists. I thought X-wing it was Jesse Slander pilot. to exclude her. <laughs> I guess they're from everywhere then. No, in Final Fantasy XIV, it's the airship people. Huh. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Are they really in all the Final Fantasies? Like Sid. Yeah, oh it's a God. recurring name. I didn't know. Loves one yeah, Final both, Fantasy knowledge. Both Bix and Wedge are uh, Star Wars characters, too. <laughs> Oh, are you? Okay, they? anyway. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're Star Wars. Uh, fighter pilots. Oh, yeah. Huh, well, what do you know? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I, I tell my dad about um, the weird scratches on the door, uh, as well as this uh, leader type. And I was wondering if he knows anything about... Uh, this new species. Uh, it seemed to be the boss. Um, I'll yeah. describe it as accurately as I can. Like, telling telling him that it looked different than the amphibians. It looked more lizard-like. Maybe not. You know, when I was town sheriff, we didn't have these problems. <laughs> so what is it that you're doing, or not doing, that I was? Hmm? Why are there all of a sudden Good monsters in our good town? Good question. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> oh, you're the no, one I'm not sure anymore. Hey, everyone. Yeah, like, oh, like, oh, jeez. I mean, look, if you're going to be taking over for me, you got to do a good job. You're supposed to be protecting the people. All of a sudden, there's monsters in town. Well, I mean, you're the first and the last line of defense here, aren't you? Yes, I am, and that's why I'm asking for your help. I don't, I've never heard of these things before. The troglodytes, sure, sure. This other thing. Huh, interesting. I don't know of any humanoid lizard creatures. At all. Do we think this um, axe-wielding person could have made the wound on the other troglodyte? Certainly. Okay. Interesting. Any ideas? Because I sure don't have any. Well, why don't we leave you guys Aww. with the rest of the night to think it over? And we'll take our last break here. And when we come back, we'll have a last short segment, a short last segment to sort out what you're going to do and see if we can't get you guys in a little more trouble. All right. I'm, g- I'm not going to sleep in, in my apartment. I'm going to stay on top of on top of it, on top of the cliff. And mm-hmm. yep, because I, I, I'm very scared of staying inside of my house now. Mm hmm. OK. Uh, all right. Well, we'll see you guys on the other side of our break. Great, see you in a bit. Mm-hmm. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Embers of the Wild. Um, our party is, has made plans, and they know exactly what they're going to do. Yep. So <laughs> what do you do this night? Okay, here's what we would like to do. We need to figure out where these are coming from. We need to figure out what they want. I think if we just outright kill them, we're just not going to find anything out about anything. Um, So I think what we need to do is we need to set up people on guard on the west side of the canyon and wait for the next scouting party to arrive. If the big boss lizard type thingy arrives, then I think our goal should be to try and capture that lizard thingy and see if we can get some information out of it. Maybe it can speak common. Maybe there's some way of communicating with it. Uh, Maybe it has some gear or some symbols on its cloak that might tell us where it's coming from or why it's there. Um, But I think that's what we should do. Yes. Great plan. Is this a plan you wish to enact tonight or just wait till tomorrow? Um, Definitely tonight. Um, they came back an hour later already. And so who's to say they don't come back in another hour? Yeah. Is there a downside to us doing this right now? 
downside is we're staying awake when we might need the sleep, but... Right. I am asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Did someone want to go wake up to hell? <laughs> yeah, okay. So My where would we... Where would we want to set up this trap then? I guess where the wherever the leader was waiting, um, so that we can get behind the leader, I think would be a good idea. Um, yeah, because I think we want to be able to surround the leader, make sure that they can't retreat or anything like that, and then we just try to capture them um, and fight if we have to. Um, yeah, I think that's what we should do. Does that sound like a good plan? Yeah, so... Uh, to the west of your place, Pearl, there's a large, like, open area. Mm -hmm. Um, what if we hide to the west of that open area, where there's, like, a choke point, where it gets narrow again? Yeah. So you mean, like, over here somewhere? Yes. Um... And it is kind of difficult to prevent them from swimming away, though, I feel like. Uh, so hopefully we catch them when they're, like, um, in this area, where they're not able to get to the water. But, well, yeah. Why don't one of you go wake up Tristel, and then position yourselves where you want to be, specifically. Um, okay. Um... I'll, I'm already up on the mountain, so I guess I'm just going to continue walking along the canyon wall, making mm -hmm. myself just all the way back to where I want to go. Okay. Am I able to jump down from this canyon wall uh, without hurting myself? Each of these like, like um, plateau sections are about 15 feet, so here you're about 30 feet off the ground. That's definitely going to be a lot of falling damage. Uh, it'll be 3d6 falling damage from here. Okay. Um... There's a ledge right here. Or is 15 feet falling damage or is 15 yeah, feet? 10 feet is falling damage. Okay. So if you've got time and you're not in a rush or anything, you can like position yourself and maybe like drop yourself and toss your shield on the ground and then lower from one area to the other and then pick up your shield and equip it again. If you're mm. not in combat, it's not a big deal. It will be loud though. If you're yeah, in combat, you're going to have to jump. What about we jumping want this off to the be ledge? An ambush. Yeah. What? What about jumping off the ledge and grabbing the tree? <laughs> That's going to be loud. Uh, yeah. but... You know, there'll be some sort of athletics or acrobatics check and failure means, you know, terrible things. Mm -hmm. And then I still have to climb down the tree, which is, takes time. Mm -hmm. Right. I think, I mean, I'm the most effective at range and I am incredibly squishy. So I think I could just stay up here. I don't think I'm needed. Yeah, what if ground. I... I've, I've been gotten now, right? Mm -hmm. What? I'm just what? making sure I've been gotten. Yes. Oh, yeah, I've seen Kyle yes. go, go get you. Um. Okay, so I'm going to wait um, behind this rock, and I will be the tank who directly engages them while ranged attacks rain down from above. Uh, okay. Where are you going to hide, Tristel? Do you know where you're gonna hide, Tristel? Yeah, I'm look. I'm looking around. I was also trying to see if I had like any Ill illusory kind mm. of magics to just disguise myself, um, but n nothing that I think would be worth um, okay. using at this time. Hold your breath. Go underwater. <laughs> yeah, I might save that. Um, I think. Maybe in the tree. Okay. If our goal is to trap perhaps anything that is coming this way, I could try putting it to sleep. Mm. Oh, you can do that? That would be very mm -hmm. useful. Mm. That way we could maybe avoid any fuss. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Um, why don't you all make stealth checks? Pearl and Tristel make them an advantage because you've got some really good cover. Uh, Kyra, you're I'm behind a rock. <laughs> you're in enough cover to make a, a stealth check, but not so much to get anything fancy. Well, well, <clears throat> um, I mean that chain mailed shield. This isn't your your forte. The other two of you so well hidden. And can I get all three of you to make me perception checks as well? Oh, wonderful. Oh my, all 15. Look at that. So you guys will notice pretty quickly one of these creatures lurking around um, over here where this uh, black oh. circle is from. It has managed to scale up onto the wall, come around the corner, and is now slinking along this upper portion, kind of moving into some cover. And then slinking and slinking into cover. They were checking out those buildings on that side. Uh, this may have been a mistake to set up on this side. Ah, oh, geez. The nearest bridge is far away. Uh, I think what should I'm, be? I think I'm going to move in the opposite direction along the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, and see if I can see something around the corner. Like, are there more of them? Or is it just that one? Is there a leader somewhere? Or Yeah, you as you peer around the corner, sure enough, there's another one lurking right at the edge of the water um, up to his waist and peering around the rocks to see if anything is coming or going. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to walk back a little bit and go back into hiding. Uh, okay. And I'm going to... I don't know if, if I'm visible to Kyra and Tristel. Um, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to just mm -hmm. do this with my hand so that I'm just marking that we now have, are dealing with two rather than one. Well, this one over here on the southern wall will get to about this point and uh, do a very similar thing as you and kind of start heading back along the canyon wall. You definitely spotted me. 100%. Does it look like it's in a hurry? No, I mean, it's slinking. It's not running, um, but it's not doing the same. Like when it was going forward, it was being really careful to get somewhere and scout. And now it's just like progressively slinking backwards as if it, you know, it's not... It doesn't. It's not trying to attract attention. It, it is trying to not attract attention, but it's not going so slowly as to be like, I'm scared. Okay, I'm gonna no, walk um, out to the corner again and just walk along the ridge and see where it goes. Uh, and I am going to yeah. reposition myself so that if they spotted me, they can't ambush me directly. Um, so you will, the rocks. Pearl, you'll see it over here. And it appears to be talking down to something over here, hissing in this direction, probably at this guy. Hmm. Or their whole group is behind that rock. Hmm. I'm just gonna wait, I think, and see what happens. Well, what happens? is the lizard with the shield and the axe will come forward. Hell yeah. Okay. Um, with his two buddies in tow. Okay. Um, and they will slink along this side, trying to stay out of the, the deepness of the middle river. Slink along over to here. I'm going to also slink along the... <laughs> the canyon and yeah. i'm gonna do a little prestidigitation symbol thingy above above myself like a something mm -hmm. that indicates that it's it's happening something's happening um what is your range on your spells uh my range is pretty far it's 100 and something 120 i think okay uh so i'm, I'm gonna make that prestidigitation thing above my head but still behind the tree so that the troglodytes hopefully don't see it mm-hmm uh, oh, I well, guess I need the... to roll <laughs> cantrip search <laughs> because yes. placid education is a cantrip. Uh, we're fine. Yes. It's, Stable. Fine. What was the the effect again? Um, I was gonna just make a little little sparkle thingy that is like 
looks red and dangerous and like it's go time type of vibe. Yeah, well, they will definitely seem to spot that. I, I was going to the... like, do a small one behind the tree specifically. To oh, oh, oh so you guys can't, so they can't see it, but the allies can. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Well, the lizard dude will wade across the river um, and start coming up like this. Tr right in the view of Pearl and Tristel, but definitely mm -hmm. hidden from Kyra. While the, the little dudes will swim down the river um, this way. I guy. am aware of this ready to like it's happening symbol and I will ready an attack if uh, something gets close to me. Okay. Um, well, I think we are at the initiative order because this thing's going to come around the corner here and spot you. Yes. And okay. I think it's time. Also, I do not have music. I don't know if we're supposed to. Uh, I am starting it now. I'm sorry for bringing back here. I'm so and bad at clicking my token. I'm sorry. We'll start eventually. Sometimes Roll20 likes to not play music, though. You know, it has bad days, too. None of these. Oh, and then my ready to attack is a lethal strike. Not yes. a non lethal strike. Lovely. Um, let's does, try the music again. Does non lethal mean that you deal less damage on top of not being able to kill? Okay. It's half damage, I believe. Right. So I'm guessing this person is going to survive one lethal hit, and then I'll switch to non-lethal. Hopefully. Just don't, don't crit. Theoretically. <laughs> you know, I'll try not to. Okay. Or maybe sleep goes off first. That would be nice. Initiative at to initiative. So Pearl is going at 6.17, and Ashley is going at 21.15. And Where nope, I? I got these things wrong. Uh, I don't see an initiative roll from you, Autumn. I, I just rolled. Oh, ah, there it is. Tristel is 18.16. So the creature will spot you coming around and let out a, a one of those like growling hisses that these troglodytes have been making. And I guess, Kyra, you are first. Oof. Um, depending if I should do a lethal or non-lethal strike against this boy. Should I go for lethal? I'm asking. Well, I think we're already in combat initiative, so All you're right. going to have to make these decisions on your own. Let's go lethal. Let's, let's go it. for it. Okay. Okay. Uh, you up. step up and roll to hit. Uh, 24 seven. will do it. Yes, you will cut into the creature for seven points of damage. Ooh, it's like will wow. tick down just a little wee bit. Oh, jeez. Okay. That was a good um, idea to uh, do lethal. And it will return combat with its battle axe, slashing out at you with a 16. Misses, clangs off uh, my armor. Tristel, you are still hidden behind the tree. The creature is unaware of you. Alrighty, I'm gonna go ahead and cast that leap. Um, Wonderful. I think it might affect almost everything, maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, so sleep will affect creatures within 20 feet of a point you choose. Oh, okay. And you will roll 5d8 for how many hit points are affected. Um, I think just focusing on that bad boy. Yeah, ignoring unconscious creatures, starting with the creature with the lowest hit points. Each creature affected by the spell falls unconscious until the spell ends. 
So you got to pick the center of it, and then it'll be 20 foot radius from there. But let's say you start it, you know, right here, and 20 feet is including Kyra at least, and so it would affect Kyra just as well as it would affect the creature. If you want it to not hit her, you'll have to like start it somewhere over here. So for it to hit this creature and these dudes would necessitate Kyra being in the center of it, or you know, in the middle of it. Yeah, and then it just starts with lower hit points and goes up. Uh -uh, Just this one. So yeah, uh, okay. we can start it over here. Great. Um, roll me, what is that, 5d8 for the total number of hit points it will affect. Fourteen. Um, creatures within 20 feet fall unconscious. They take no damage. It doesn't look like there's a saving throw involved. Um, however... Affected. 14 is not enough hit points to affect oh, this geez. creature. <laughs> 14 on 5d8 is actually downright atrocious. Garbage. Um, yeah, you should normally roll 22 and a half on this roll. So this is a complete trash. Uh, our troglodytes will start it up, coming around expecting to run into Kyra here, but not seeing her. Mm. Um, and then hopping out here and we'll take a moment to survey the situation. Uh, let's see if this guy can spot Tristel in the trees. I am concerned uh, for my life here. This is, seems dangerous. Yep. Um, the next one will come on up as well and quickly hop into, Ooh, can't quite make it, can get as far as there. And then Pearl will go. Um, okay, I'm gonna cast Magic Missile and do one missile on... <laughs> Hold on. Take out the ads. Ads first. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I should do... Hmm. I should probably do two missiles on the one that's right behind you. Uh, but I don't know where I want to put the third one. If I want to damage the one far- further away or if I want to damage I the... I do the one further away. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, actually, what's the range on Magic Missile? Oh, like 120, 120. feet or something. Okay. It's huge. Okay, yeah. so I'm totally fine. Um, so two on this one, and then one on this one. I think so, yeah. That's what I'm going to do. All right, do. well, roll me a 1d20 and don't roll a 1. Uh, okay, that's fine. Okay. It's totally fine. And then roll me 3d4 plus 3, and we'll just do the first 2d4. Um, to the first, and next one, d4 to the next. Uh, okay, three, d4 plus three. Yes. So three, six, seven, eight to the first creature, and four to the next. Uh, bring both of them to about half hit points. Um, wait, how, wait, how does that work? Mm -hmm. They roll for hit points, so they have like a, you know, they don't all have the same HP oh, number. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, this um, one has somewhere around 14 HP. This one has somewhere around eight max, and uh, you've brought them both to about half. Okay, uh, right. and then I'm also gonna move a little bit. Uh, I'm just gonna move over here. Sure, it's not too difficult to get past those cactuses, but I think it's gonna be difficult terrain to get around all this stuff. So that's perfect. Yep. Um, Kyra, second round of combat, your turn. Mm, let's see. Um, can I move here? If you move away from this creature without disengaging, oh, okay. you will take an attack of yeah. opportunity, unfortunately. Okay, so I'm going to attack the big boy. All right. Um, Arming sword up and down into the creature's flesh with another fantastic hit. Can you maybe not Ooh. roll max damage and like 17s <laughs> to hit, please? Do you want us to uh, die? Mark Mark is doing that. Do you feel like there's some sort of cheating button you found? I know you're all <laughs> yeah, programmers. Do. Please don't like to hit attack the system. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Yeah, you. you... <laughs> really? 
uh, you hack into this thing. Blood begins to flow. The creature is a little bit surprised at the ferocity of your attacks that you've been able to get through its armor. And you'll notice now that now that he's uh, cut open and damaged that this creature is wearing some uh, a chainmail shirt underneath his robes oh. and with his shield and everything. So he's well armored. He's got 16 AC, but you managed to keep hitting him. Chainmail is um, rare. We should loot this if we yeah. kill this boy. Well, he's going to take the disengage action um, and then come back to this point. So he's got um, great cover from this tree against casters up here and over here. That is not what we want. No. And Stell will take her turn. This guy forgot to get added somewhere. Uh, He would have spent his turn climbing, climbing. I'll have to make the climbing check. Well, I'm in a tree. Uh, all right. Um, I think I'll cast another minor illusion. Mm-hmm. Um, to try and spook this this guy down here next to mm-hmm. Kyra. Um, so I'll cast that. Another just like freaking screeching noise from like I guess. Maybe this cliff where it's like, oh, like it, it can't quite see what the noise is, but. Ah, but like screeching coming from mm-hmm. behind the cliff side? Yes. Okay. Uh, any particular um, sort of screeching? Any any further description on what that might um, sound like? Let's see, they're amphibians. Let's do like a high pitched, like bird like screeching. Hmm. Okay. Excellent. Um, this guy over here is next, and I think he still doesn't see you. So he will have heard the screeching noise, though, um, and is a little bit concerned about that. So this creature will quickly dart behind this backside and uh, kind of scuttle through the river a little bit, looking around for something, calling out to his allies as he does so. This one, as well, will see the mess going on. Don't think it spotted you in the bushes either. <sighs> but he's going to do it anyway. Uh, this one will come towards Kyra and make two claws and a bite. So slash with one claw, which is going to hit for four damage. Slash with the second claw, which is a miss. And sink its teeth into you. Close, but no cigar. Um, and this troglite will end their turn. The other one that had climbed down from the hillside is like hissing out at this dude and will go across the river. But because crossing the river is a little bit difficult for him, he'll only get to about here before the end of his turn. And Pearl will oh, start. On- only all the way over there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is not looking great. Um, nope. Yeah, boss is very easily to, able to run away. Yeah, I can still burst sprint. Um, worst case. I think... Um... I can make my way over here, right? So this area, getting past these cactuses and these bushes are going to be difficult terrain. So if you want to do this movement, that'll take you... 46 feet um, which would mean you have to move and dash okay um can i move up here this is doable then? totally doable yeah okay is uh is this one visible to me no way it's got lots of cover from the the hillside it's kind of kind of line of sight i feel like <laughs> I feel like this goes right through some of those big cliffs. Okay. Do I need line of sight for magic missile? (laughs) Yes, absolutely. 100%. I can't just like wing it and make one go where I think it is and then maybe it will hit. No, that is not how the magic works. All right. Are you able to non-lethal a magic missile? No, absolutely not. Oh yeah, I was going to ask that as well. The only things that work for non-lethal are, like, weapons that might have a non-lethal form. Like a sword, you could turn it on the flat of the blade, 
or like a spear, you could use the, the back of the spear or something. But if you have like a mace, you can't just like lightly club someone in the head. So um, it has to be a weapon that has the form of doing less damage than you might normally okay. or that can be used in a um, non-standard way. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to cast Magic Missile again. Uh, and I'm going to do two missiles on this one mm -hmm. next to Kyra and one missile on the boss dude. I don't know if you can see the boss dude. He put himself behind tree cover specifically to get away from you. I'm going to need you to make me a perception check DC 15. If you can pass that, you can see him well enough to target him. Otherwise, the, the branches and everything are in. You can't even, you don't even know where he's gone. You lost all sight of him. There's these really, really smelly, fishy troglodytes over here. And the drac, the, this lizard dudes, who knows where it's gone. I, just, I hate these. It's dudes. just gone. Okay. Um, well, in that it's like case, a third um, natural one today. <laughs> you know, <It's> beautiful. <laughs> All right, I'm People gonna. Your then, world's unique. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do one or two missiles on the one that's half health, and one. You missile know, I think you need glasses, Pearl. I think Maybe so too. Consider... Right? Yep, yeah, that would be neat. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you say two here and one here? Uh, no, the other way around. <laughs> okay. Two here, one here. Got it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, roll me a d20 for magic surge. Come on, fireball. <laughs> We're fine. Uh, you're fine. Okay. All right. Gosh. All right. 2d4 plus two against the first one. 1d4 plus one against the second one. Uh, Sorry. Uh, 2d4 plus... Plus two. Two for the one on the right. Yes. Yep. God damn it. What's with my rolls? Oh, almost good enough. Okay. And 1d4 plus 1 on the other. Nice. Okay. Excellent. Uh, and that is your move and your action, and it becomes Kyra's turn. Ooh, well, guess I can do one thing, which is uh, do a slash. I have this very low health boy. Surrender is always an option as well. <laughs> or you could slaughter the beast before you, rending its uh, arm from its body, letting it fall to the ground and bleed out everywhere. Uh, our other enemy will take this opportunity to stick close to the hillside and get the heck out of here. Oh. Um, and then this will be 15 more feet off of this position. Damn. So we can go up the river like this. Tristel. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I can see. Mm, let's see. Will I try this again? Um, oh, well, we don't need the big one asleep, so I don't know if that's useful. Uh, well, we do need the big one asleep because we yeah, need the to big one it, asleep right? is is the oh, goal you know here. What? That's the plan. And I have his. Is he already gone? He's gone around the corner. You're not sure where he is. If you cast a sleep. I can cast um, it in 90 feet, right so I can cast here. it. Yeah, over there. You That's know a 20 Let's foot radius. Uh huh. And hopefully well, they don't drown. I can cast it at the like max 90 range or whatever. Mm -hmm. or, like, yeah, yeah, and as far to the right as possible. Or up. Yeah. yeah. All right. All so right. you want to cast I'm it gonna, right there? I'm going to do that. All right, and that'll stretch out 20 feet. Very nice. Uh, uh -huh. Roll me that 5d8 and roll better. <laughs> or roll really low. Roll a 5. five. The monsters. You're really low on I need, right uh, now. Oh, Ashley, just send me your vibes, okay? <laughs> I don't want to send you my vibes. <laughs> uh, your spell goes off. Cool. No idea what happens. It can't see off. the creature, so you don't know what it does. Oh, go check. Well, we need um, to deal with these. Oh yeah, there are plenty of bad boys. 
<laughs> I think with six seconds rounds, we don't have to worry about a sleep body drowning in a river, probably. That's true. And it is coming, if it does, like, that starts to happen, it will come downstream to us first. Yeah. True. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, uh, that's your turn, casting spells from the trees, and the creatures are up. This troglodyte is going to come over here and look for the sound of that screeching again, trying to find it. Does not find it, calls out on its own, and will uh, go over here with the rest of its action. This one is dead. Um, And this one will burst out from behind the trees and hop on Kyra with a claw, a claw, and a bite. Oh my God, these are terrible rolls. Pearl, take your turn. Oh, I have a, I have a question. Um, Yes. When bonus actions can happen- Only only on on your turn, turn. only on your turn. So reactions that can happen whenever. Yes. Well, Pearl. I did not see the boss person run away, right? Because I rolled the yeah, shitty perception roll. Yeah, you lost all. Roll. Okay. Um, no idea. Could be anywhere. Neat. Um, <laughs> did I at the very least see that the boss person ran in that direction, or? Yeah, you saw the thing retreat in this direction, and you lost it behind the tree, and it's somewhere over there to the west. I think I really Maybe. want to follow it, but I'm kind of worried about Kyra right now. Um, so I don't think I would run after it. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do a firebolt on uh, this one. Can trip surge. Can trip surge. There we go. Oh. Totally fine. <laughs> See, we don't need it. We didn't need that table. It's fine. Um, don't tell me I spent so long on it. <laughs> <laughs> I spent so long thinking about my characters. I don't don't kill my character. Uh, you're safe. Okay. You're on a ledge. You're next to a cactus. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Safe. Yeah. Thank you. It's safe. All right. Yeah. Fifteen is definitely a hit. Hell yeah. Uh, Raw some damage. Great. You know what? Fine. That's <laughs> cool. There's always one in every party. Mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> Kyra, it's your turn. I forgot to have you make con saves before, but do it now. These things are stanky. Um, Stanky. That is definitely a pass. You're totally fine. Don't even worry about it. Oh, great. Extends does nothing to bother. Oh my god. Five. See, you two balance (laughs) each other out, you know? (laughs) Light and shadow. Sound and silence. I twirl around as it came up from behind and just... Smack it, my sword. Dang. Yeah, well, it is wounded and the dying. Tristel, still hiding in the trees. Nobody right. knows where you are. <laughs> I think I will finally come down from the trees, but that'll probably be, like, my movement. Um, however, I would like to use a bonus action to, to offer up my bardic inspiration to Kyra. Ooh, what is that? Excellent. Do? Tell her. You get an extra dice. Um, anytime in the next, oh, once within the next 10 minutes, uh, okay. add, add this die. What is, what are you adding to it? To any uh, one ability check. Ex- yes. You could add uh, it to like attack, you know, and just wait, hit until even after harder. it rolls. Mm-hmm. Alrighty then. The next troglodyte will come on out. And come around the corner, see that, oh my god, there's a soft target. Well, soft. You have like 14 AC, you know. Um, and it will come towards you with a multi attack, slashing for you on a critical hit. Oh, no. <laughs> and it will do nine points of damage, oh, and you will go down. Oh, jeez. No. Um, the troglodyte. In the tree. <laughs> no longer has enough movement to get to Kyra, and you are... You can attack things within five feet of you. This is five feet. This is 5.6 feet. <laughs> so how do you guys want to rule this? Because however it works for the monsters is how it's going to work for you. Is this close enough, or is 5.1 feet enough that you can't make the attack? I think um, if the characters are two by two, then I want like directly adjacent squares. It's just easier okay. to take into account that way. Okay. Um, 
but this gap right here is a uh, reasonable or like yeah um, well the yeah we got two things to worry about yeah, here i guess sure it's so we'll say if it's like double grade game. yeah exactly at five is our cutoff point which is perfect um, okay. So this creature will come over here. It'll, well, I guess with the rest of its turn, then instead of multi-attacking, it's going to search your body for anything valuable. Do you have any obvious jewelry, gold, coins, silver, wealth? What do you got on you? Wine. All right. I got 20 gold. I have my lyre, oh, yeah. my, my instrument. Um, and I also have some favors from admirers, including a love letter and a single rose, if no, that's of no. interest. Okay. Absolutely <laughs> not. But it will see your gold, and on its turn, it'll go after your gold. Um, I guess that's a free object interaction. It'll grab your bag of gold. It steals it. Bye. Um, the other troglodyte down here is in serious trouble. Well, his leader's abandoned him. His friend is dead. However, one of his enemy is down. He's going to make a morale check. It, she's going to make a morale check. It's going to make a morale check. And it's going to pass. God damn so it. it will multi-attack with a claw. Whoosh, and a claw whoosh, is a hit, hit for six. Six And damage. a bite, which is not a hit. And you go down to three. The troglodyte is chilling. No. <laughs> Pearl. Oh my goodness. We're not doing well. This is very dangerous. <sighs> okay. I am out of spell slots. I don't have anything exciting apart from firebolts. Um... <sighs> so... Tristel is going to have to make saving throws. Or death saving throws soon, right? Unless somebody stabilizes them. Absolutely. Yes. Um, and if they fail one, or if they fail three, they die. A nine or below is a failure. A one is a double failure. How long is it going to take? Is it like it's one per round? Right? One per round. Yeah. Which means she could die in as little as two rounds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, I'm trying to figure out if I should like if I should try to make my way down the cliff so that I can stabilize her. Um, and can I can I get down this cliff and do a firebolt? Uh, the only way to get down the cliff to the ground floor and do a firebolt would be to take three d six falling damage. Uh, that does not seem like a great idea. You got six HP. What are the chances that three D six rolls more than six? <laughs> oh, yeah. With my rolls, um, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. It's like um, eighty-five percent chance. Okay, Kyra, you can heal yourself as a bonus action. Yes, I'm right? fine. Uh, I don't my know turn's if you're next fine. turn. I'm gonna heal one D ten plus one. Okay. What are you gonna do, Pearl? What are you gonna do? Well, I you could. I, I don't think slowly I have... come down the cliff with your whole turn. I'm not gonna do that. Um, okay, I think I'm just gonna fireball this one that's low health. Cause okay. we need to reduce their damage output right now as quickly as possible. Um, do it. Yep. Okay, I'll roll the goddamn Can't cantrip trip surge. surge. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, one of these days. Right. Fireball. No. There we go. You miss. Whoosh. The Actually, fireball blasts above the creature. I do not, uh, maybe, because I'm gonna do the thing uh, I'm gonna do Tides of Chaos to Ooh. gain advantage on this roll. Tides of Chaos. Let me just look at my books real quick here. I don't remember what that ability does. It sounds excellent. It allows you to randomly make me roll on the search table at some point in the future if you want to, among other things. <laughs> Tides of Chaos. You can manipulate the forces of chance and chaos to gain advantage on one attack roll ability check or saving throw. Once you do so, you must finish a long rest before you can use it again. Ah, uh, you would have had to declare that ahead of time. No. I am so sorry. No. But it, no. Usually, if you can make, like, you can improve a roll afterwards, it'll say specifically. Like, if we look at that Bardic Inspiration, it says you can wait until uh, the creature can wait until after it rolls the d20 before deciding to use the Bardic Inspiration die. Tides of Chaos is that before the attack roll. Mm. 
Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yep, Google agrees with you. God I'll damn be it. Fine. I I'll wanted be to, fine. like, I had it in mind. Does that count? Because this is, like, the most important <laughs> role I've done so far. <laughs> We're all new to this game, to our new <laughs> characters and everything. Mm -hmm. I will we'll make an exception for this time since we're all learning if you'll roll me on the cantrip stability table again. <laughs> and then that's going to kill me either or something. Okay, all right. Uh, there we go. We're fine. <sighs> all right, go ahead and make your second attack. Roll. Okay. We, we got this. There we go. Uh, blast <laughs> okay. it. One more damage. No, not the creature goes down. The fire oh. wraps over it. It dies. Kyra takes their turn. All right. Uh, I will immediately heal myself because, ouch, I am not feeling great. Uh, so I get 1d10 plus 1. Um... Oh, my God. Beautiful. <laughs> really? Luck has ran out. <laughs> no. I just love this. Uh, five hit like, points for what you. What am I gonna do if I roll one? <laughs> um, it has oh, to happen eventually. Goodness. Um. Okay. Instead of attacking, I am going to ready an attack, which okay. theoretically should give me the same uh, result if they decide to attack me. If they decide to run away, then I don't get the... Right. Um, right. If they come to you, yeah. then you get to make an attack at them at this normal attack rate and everything. And if they run away, then you just, you're just you just done. Yeah. Okay. Um, Tristel, first death saving throw, please. It's in the center of your character sheet somewhere. Oh, it's Help. a pass. Okay. It's a pass. All right. Our troglodyte has taken the gold from you and is done. I've got money. Oh, no, I'm out. I forgot have the gold. <laughs> and uh, he will run into the river. <laughs> oh, I completely forgot about that. Pearl, take your turn. Oh, I am poor. Christelle is dying. <laughs> I'm going to run after this thing because I lose attack my friends. And I do not have a lot of money, so seeing that amount of gold just taken makes me very upset. Um, so I'm gonna get up to the edge and I'm gonna have firebolt. All right, it's got a little bit of cover, so it's got plus two to its AC. Make me an attack roll. And now when you do Tides of Chaos, mm -hmm. at any time before you regain the use of this feature, the DM can have you roll on the magic surge table immediately after you cast a sorcerer spell, oh, a first level or higher. Yeah. Okay. So cool. you can like force me to do the spell. Yeah, table. but I can't force you to do it on a cantrip. I mean, I feel like you should be able to. Although Tides of Chaos it's... is a strong thing, so maybe that would only be for the strong spells. I don't know. Yeah, it's fine. I'll just wait till the very spell? next time you cast a spell. <laughs> you're gonna have forgotten about this moment, and it's oh. gonna come back around. You know what? You're gonna forget about it as well. So. <laughs> That's actually the truth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right. Uh, it's got plus two to its AC, firebolt, right. and cantrip surge. Great, you know, I'm, <laughs> I got the rolls. Woo! You got this. Cantrip surge, cantrip surge. Oh, right, great, cool, let's do that too. Okay, fine, at least my rolls on cantrip surge is working out so far. All right, Kyra, Tristella is bleeding to death just feet away from you. If you can pass a DC medicine check, DC 10 medicine check, you can stabilize her. Mm, I feel really bad about that money getting away, but I should probably save my friend instead of caring about money. You're worried about her money and not her life? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do a medicine check. Very I American of you. My inspiration. Okay. okay. You have stabilized her. She will survive. Um, Justel doesn't need to make death saves. The monster will scurry away. Do they have a swim? They do not. So it will hop into the river um, and make its way around the corner 
and I guess get lost from view as it scampers up the canyon side. Uh, Pearl. Uh, can I make my way, like, here? If I use my feline agility. Uh, feline agility. Can you Doubles put the movement. feline agility into the chat for us, please, so we may all view its superbness? There we go. Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay, it's difficult to train, but you do an attack, yep. right? Yep, because okay. your speed is doubled, so you can move there very quickly. And from that spot, you can see the creature. Um, it is knowing that there's a caster up on the wall. It's sort of like pressed against the wall. You've got enough of a view on it that you can make an attack roll, but it does have three quarters cover from you. So it's got a okay. plus five to its AC. That's fine. I'm still going to attack it. Um, Surge. Yeah, I, I got it. <laughs> One death. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. Mm-hmm. There we go. Uh, 17 <laughs> is enough. Hell yeah. Seven. And it will go down. Nice. Uh, okay. Do I see any more threat around? No, or... you do not. Not in the sleep. I don't know. Where is the slept creature? Um. Where did it go? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't know. Are we still in initiative? <laughs> or... Uh, you're all pretty certain that the all the enemies are gone, right? So we can step out of initiative unless you think there's still threats nearby that are waiting to ambush you. I would just okay, I'm look for concerned that this creature may have sunk to the bottom of the river, so I'm going to spend a bit kicking around the river. Because they uh, were wearing heavy iron chainmail, they could have sunk. Absolutely, yes. He has sunk to the bottom of the river. Yes. You can see okay. the unconscious corpse surrounded <laughs> by, you know, tattered clothes flowing in the water, chainmail holding it down, shield still strapped to its arm, the battle axe has floated away a little bit, you know, just a few feet. Uh, wait, are they already dead? They're unconscious. Okay, I will immediately drag them out so they don't drown. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, there is a uh, breath-holding reflex born into most creatures. I don't think it's just mammals. I think that's most creatures in the world. Uh, so when you... Oh, is it sorry. a mammalian thing? I don't think so. Uh, so it's unconscious, but alive not drowned uh, awesome I'm gonna I'm gonna throw my rope down to the to Kyra mm-hmm. uh, yeah I tie up the creature so that when they wake up they're not gonna run away alright uh, I think I'm... you take the armor and shield off as well or you yeah. leave it on yeah. disarm uh, disarmor um, okay you also don't want to wake it up while you're disarmoring True. I want to tie right? it up first, but can I take the armor off when they're tied up? If you can pass um, me a DC 10 sleight of hands check, then you can take off the armor without waking it up. But if uh, you roll lower than a 10, it will disturb the creature enough to wake it. How long so does can... this really last? Uh, well, you know, Tristel would know that, but she's unconscious and can't answer you. Ah, shoot. Um, cause I'm thinking, like, should I wait for Pearl to come down? Like, ready an attack. Maybe uh, it lasts an hour. Yeah, who Maybe knows? it only lasts a minute. Well, I would want okay, you to I'm tie it up as quickly safe, as possible. Because... I'm going to tie them up without taking off their chainmail, but I am going to take away their axe and weapons. And sure, yeah. The axe is already down in the wall- river. You can take off the shield. You'll tie them up with the chainmail on. Pearl will eventually come back down here. Oh, I was going to go I... to the creature that died, because I saw them, like, looting uh tristel's body oh, yeah, yeah. uh so I was just, i'm just gonna incredibly carefully move down these cliffs uh and just yeah, see if, if they took something not, or... if you're not in a time crunch you can easily get down there find the creature find the money that it took mm-hmm. um, some of the gold spilled into the river but you can all pick it all back up and okay. escape uh and then uh i'm gonna climb up the walls again um up here and make my way over here and uh, then climb down. Um, but I think this is where we will leave it for the day. When we come back next week, we'll pick up right here with Tristel unconscious for 1d4 hours until she can get some healing. 
the creature unconscious only for another like 20 seconds because it's only unconscious for a minute. Um, oh. Yeah, if you had taken off that armor, it actually probably would have woken up one way or the other just in the amount of time it would have taken to take off. Goodness. So good okay. choice. And um, we'll see what the party can do in this uncomfortably close situation <laughs> yeah. next week. Sure. Goodness. I'm afraid. That was scary. Thank you all for playing. Yeah. <laughs> all right. You guys did great. You all survived. There were only like 12 natural ones rolled through the session. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ooh, I rolled so bad. At least I didn't get any surges that messed anything up. But like. Yeah, that would have been awful. <laughs> oh my goodness. I should have stayed in the tree, but it is what it oh, is. Oh wow. <laughs> Did you get any, like, help from the Bardic Inspiration? Or did the creature leave before you got time to use it? Uh, no, I did not use it at all. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What? Whew. Well, Freya, uh, it's your channel. Oh, you wanna right. Wanna... Uh, something? Uh, shit. I didn't set up my shortcuts to, like, plug stuff. Um... Well, this was Embers of the Wilds. I hope you enjoy this campaign. Um, there's all sorts of information about, you know, the campaign, the episodes, and the world that Neil has created. Um, so if you want to read up on that, there's a link to the wiki in chat. Um, otherwise, um, if you want to, you can join our Discord. Uh, our Discord is generally mostly game developers, nerdy people, uh, and has a very sizable LGBT community. Um, so if you want to join our weird little Discord in the world, then feel free to hop into our corner. Uh, yeah, uh, th there we go. That's that's my plugging, I guess. Uh, oh, I have a Patreon in case you want to like financially support things. Um, yeah. Neil, what are you doing next? Uh, we will have a campaign called Legends of Arcadia Genesis tomorrow morning, uh, about the same time that this was about, supposed to start. And that's sort of early days of this world, back when creatures are new, in the first year of creation where gods still walk the earth and player characters are easily swayed by deities' <laughs> offers of power and are a little crazy. Um, and that'll be on my channel at twitch.tv slash koibu. Awesome. Yay. Thank you so much for like wanting to do this in the first place with complete strangers because uh, <laughs> none of us knew each other uh, or you didn't know any of us but um but yeah it's been super fun and i'm very much looking forward to the rest of this campaign yeah uh, this is great yeah well i look forward to next week's session all right yep join in next week at the same time question mark is it when is daylight <laughs> <laughs> gonna kick in um i don't know Somewhere around this time, you'll find all the information on the wiki. There we go. Um, uh, okay, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, and I will see you all next week. How is role-playing an acting, speaking character? I feel like we didn't do that. I think uh, I felt really awkward in the beginning doing it, especially when the prompt is sort of like, what are you talking about? And then that's the first like interaction. Otherwise, I think after a while, you I so far got used to it pretty quickly. But then again, there hasn't been any like heavy role playing, I think. Um, uh, do you think the trogs are relevant with Pearl's backstory? I don't think so. Um, like if the claw marks was only on my door and they would only target my door, then maybe. Uh, but I don't think they are given that they targeted other doors as well. Speaking in character is hard. Yeah, I want to try to do that as much as possible. Um, I don't like when too many things are out of character. I feel like a lot of flavor is lost and it often can become too mechanical in a way that kind of takes away what is the charm of tabletop role-playing games. Um, I really, really, really like the like interpersonal social aspect of it. Team Siskoria bothers me when they step out of character uh, frequently. I feel like Tomb Siskoria has a pretty okay balance. I don't think they take it too far. I guess it depends on who it is. Um, I feel like Nick is really good at staying in character for a lot of the interactions. Um, but 
I'm guessing it's one of those things where like, if nobody else is in character, you feel awkward being in character uh, and vice versa, right? Um, yeah. Look at all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's moving her setup back into the living room. Uh, actually, I'm curious what my heart rate was. <laughs> my heart rate was just spiking hard before we, um, <laughs> before we started this. I just recently got this like fitness watch thingy. <laughs> That's during the session. Oh my um, goodness. There you go. That's my heart rate. Uh, you see the spike where things go kind of orange? Uh, the huge spike was a right before we started the stream. Or not right before, like, that was during the um, half hour run up before we started. <laughs> it was just higher throughout the whole thing. Um, yep, so. <laughs> Goodness. Good first episode. Thanks! I think that was, that was really good. Um, I feel like it's kind of hard in the beginning to uh, try to ramp up the pace and make sure that it feels um, interesting enough because in the beginning things are kind of supposed to be very down to earth and not very spectacular and whatnot. Um, and I feel like it actually worked out really well uh, in that we almost died near the end. So I think I think it was fine. Um, I think this was really good. Uh, I'm very happy with this. Um, First episodes are, are hard, especially with new players. Yeah. It's never going to be good on the first episodes. It's good, but it's not really like late game. Yeah, I feel like, and especially as a viewer, you need some time to get invested in the characters as well. Um, I think for, for us as players, we're kind of already invested in our characters, uh, but you need some time to like, I don't know, make the viewers start liking characters for who they are and, and get attached to them, you know? Um, I feel like that, that's always a heavy lift. Uh, it's always really difficult. Um, and that, that just takes time by necessity. I don't think there's really a way to avoid that unless you like script your entire first episode to make sure you like min-max the amount of um, excitement or make people feel emotionally attached or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, we did manage to bag the lizard. <laughs> and we got the gold back. Um, Tristel's unconscious, but she's fine. Everything's fine. Um, uh, I was concerned Neil was going to go to hard you guys, but I wasn't as bad as I thought. Still, it could have gone horrible with three attacks around. Yeah, the the three attacks around that feels insane to me. It's three attacks and the poison, which f for being the first creature <laughs> we engage with. Um, and we're facing like multiple. It's not just one or two. It's like, oh, it's it's five you're gonna have to deal with. Um, that's kind of spicy. Uh, but I, I'm guessing the, I'm guessing it sort of takes into account that, you know, Kyra is very strong and that I'm probably gonna be so scared that I'm gonna stay away from every single creature all the time, uh, which I did because I'm gonna die immediately if I don't. Um, so, yeah. We didn't roll any surges. I don't know if that's good or bad. I think cantrip surges are mostly bad or neutral. I don't know how many positive ones we have. Neil might also be used to having tougher characters and making the encounter just a tad bit too spicy. Um, I mean, as far as I know, Neil, before he starts a campaign, he, um, or even before he introduces a new enemy, he does like test combat with our characters uh, to make sure that it's not like way off balance and whatnot. Um, yeah, he mentioned that he's done like combat rounds and whatever to make sure that um, they're not going to overpower us entirely. Um, yeah. Kyra is a proficient sheriff, especially with those roles. <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness, I feel like I had so many useless roles. Um, <laughs> whew. I am glad I got to do my Tides of Chaos to get advantage on that roll. I don't know if we would have survived if that didn't hit. Like Kyra was really low because her heal was like 2 HP, I think. And with two HP and those creatures doing three attacks, like, <laughs> oh my goodness, that was so close. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I, um, 
I just did, I legitimately, I, I wasn't trying to like post hoc rationalize to get to use advantage in Tides of Chaos. Um, I, I legitimately thought I could say that afterwards. Um, and I, I, I mean, given that I knew how dangerous the situation was, I just, um, I had planned to use that in case the roll was really low. Um, because otherwise, um, yeah, otherwise if the troglodyte would go next, they would down Kyra. Um, then we would have one escaping troglodyte, um, Tristel would be down, Kyra would be down, um, and then I don't know what the third one would do, um, but then, you know, me trying to kill the third one, uh, or I can jump down and then risk getting killed, because I can literally get killed in one attack. Um, so, like, I don't know, it would have been a horribly risky situation. We might have gotten out fine, but um, this is really spicy. <laughs> Goodness. Um, strength of a magic user with low HP is planning out your fights and pretending like you're not worth attacking. Yeah. I feel like with the range of Firebolt and, like, many of the spells, I feel like I can stay at a distance and still be effective. I feel like that's a really, really, really important thing. Um, yeah, it's not like I have to be in melee range in order to be useful. Um, so, and I have a pretty good climbing speed, so I think I'm just generally gonna try to find a perch, uh, a cliff, uh, something that can just offset me from any other creatures. Um, and I don't imagine we're gonna be fighting like a lot of flying creatures. The only issue would be like in close quarters where I literally can't go in to a safe spot. But then again, uh, Kyra has protection fighter style. So if I just like cozy up with Kyra, I'm, I might be fine. Um, you shouldn't be afraid of wild searches, by the way. It has positive stuff too. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like, yeah, most of them are positive. It's like 75% um, of at least a 5e table, 75% is positive. Um, yeah, and there's a, and then most of the rest of that is neutral, and the last like five percent is straight up dangerous. Um, Two percent being TPK, basically. Two percent being the fireball. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope it was good on the viewer end as well. Um, it's kind of my first time trying to stream a D&D &D campaign and whatnot. Um, hopefully it was watchable apart from the audio issues at first. There were some awkward moments, but again, first episodes. What, what were the awkward moments? Uh, it seemed like you guys were kind of lost and didn't know what to do or you were with silence. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the, the number one thing for me where I legitimately did not know what to say or do was the very first thing where like, I was hanging out with Tristel in my apartment. I was like, I don't know what we would talk about. Um, Cause I, I like the way that I imagine Pearl is that Pearl has a lot of insecurities with making friends and hanging out with friends because she knows that she's hurt people in the past with the, the way her magic works and that she's just very like magically unstable. And there's been accidents in town where people uh, got hurt because of, you know, the, uh, spell casting surges and whatnot. So, so I think Pearl has sort of developed this fear of making friends. So I think she's very cautious to even do that. Um, I think she still wants to meet people. So there's like, sometimes she will try, um, but generally um, she's, a, she's very much a uh, hermit. And um, yeah, I, I think she, her most of her relationships are more utilitarian uh, when it comes to like hunting with people and whatnot. Maybe if you explore where magic comes from, she might be able to figure out why she's like this. Yeah, I think the, um, I think that's gonna be sort of a medium to long-term thing for Pearl to figure out. Um, I feel like a lot of the information that Pearl needs is um, has to come from people who have more knowledge about the world, or knowledge about the divine, or knowledge about like supernatural stuff, or things from other planes of existence, um, like. It, it doesn't really help for Pearl to ask people around in town because everybody in Trog Canyon is very, very isolated from the rest of the world. And there's no like um, intellectual center. There, there's no like academy or I don't know, wizards and towers. Like we don't have any of those people. Um, and I think the, 
for Pearl to like try to figure things out about her past and why she's there in the first place. I just don't think there's going to be a lot of information there. Um, I think the one person Pearl might be able to talk to is the cleric. Um, and there is a backstory thing that I haven't brought up yet, uh, but uh, my plan was to do that by the end of the stream. Uh, but I think we're going to do that next stream. It just didn't feel there was no good like moment to bring it up because there were more pressing issues, you know? Some of the leveling systems feel really weird. Um, the thief leveling in 2e, I don't know if it's like in 2e in general, uh, but watching Tombs of Scoria, the, the whole thing about like stealing non-magical item gives you items gives you XP um, just feels pretty strange um, and kind of like it does force you to make weird decisions um, just for XP. I don't really like it when that happens. Um, I feel like the milestone leveling works pretty well um, and I like um, in, in Tombs of Scoria they also do the thing of like um, if players have some really good ideas or really good RP moments, they get bonus experience for that. I kind of like that. I think that's neat. Um, but when, when you start having things that incentivize people to um, just go out of character to get more XP, I feel like then the system is designed in a broken way. I feel like that shouldn't happen. It was fun. Um, next week, at the same time, plus or minus one hour, depending on daylight savings shenanigans happening in the world. Thank you all so much for joining, uh, and I will see you all next time.